first pitch swinging, slow roller. Maven coming home. Goldschmidt, not in time. Padres win. A military victory yesterday, a sneak attack by Maven, and the Padres celebrate snapping that four-game losing streak with a 4-3 win to close out the series. And now in comes Kansas City, interleague action. The Royals have never won here at Petco, 0-6. And uh, we invite you into our Royal Suite, the on-deck suite, which is actually on the field of play here at Petco Park. We're going to talk more about our angle as uh, we go through it, but you, you feel pretty uh, comfortable here. This is huh? really amazing, a chance for people to come to the ballpark and see up close and personal what it's really like. We are literally feet away from the on-deck circle of the Kansas City Royals, so it's a whole experience that you love from the from the get-go, Dick. Well, first of all, riding in that beautiful Cadillac, you don't get to do that. That's uh, Mark. You have to go to Alpine to ride in that big boat. Ballet oh, service. Oh, boy, Allison, lovely Allison, greets us with a little gift package and then shows us uh, into the Lexus Home Play Club. That's all part of the package with the buffet. Now, I, I, I had a pretty big plate, but look at my man. Hey. He's coming down the line, taking a piece of everything. I've got a store up for nine innings. <laughs> That beautiful bar, that's all part of the luxury of uh, the Yontech Suite experience. Then you brought out right on the field level. It's great. And that's our broadcast location today. So your concierge will greet you when you park your car, take you all the way to your seat, so you get a chance to enjoy a big league ball game up close and personal. Well, for us, out of the broadcast booth, a unique experience. And so will it be for you tonight. The contrast in the two pitchers you're going to see is quite remarkable. We are going to see the yin and the yang of pitchers. I mean, Giordano Ventura. He's got the fastball that can reach over 100 miles an hour. He also throws a changeup and a curveball. Eric Stoltz, on the other hand, look at the differential in the fastball. Look at the differential in the cur the curveball for Ventura, 82 point. A lot of guys would love the fastball at that speed, but there's his record. You see the ERA. He gets a punch out per innings pitch, but he got great. He has great composure on the mound as well, Dick. So he won't overpower Eric Stoltz, but he will finesse the hitters. That's the one thing Eric Stoltz really needs to do, a bounce back after two and two-thirds last outing. He needs to throw strikes on the corners, get ahead, but you see the difference. Just because he tops out at 87 doesn't mean he can't win. If he hits the spots, he could be two and three. A roster change today made by Josh Burns, the general manager. Kyle Blanks, old number 88, has taken the train from El Paso to San Diego with nine home runs.
earlier today, Kyle Blanks has been brought up from AAA. So to go along with that move, Xavier Nady has been designated for assignment. Blanks has just been off the charts with his time with the Chihuahuas. Nine home runs, and they hope that that power translates here with the Padres. Brought Kyle back uh, into the mix. You know, our reports on Kyle have been strong, uh, that he's uh, swinging the bats, uh, swinging the bat uh, well. He hit his ninth homer yesterday. Uh, been very productive uh, down in AAA. I'm here, just want to play like everybody else, and, you know, that's whatever capacity I'm able to help, that's, I'm more than happy to do so, and, you know, all I can do is go out there and play. Hopefully he can bring that same power to Petco Park. Coming up, game one against the Royals as the Padres try and make it two wins in a row. Eric Stoltz on the mound for the Padres. First pitch is coming up on Fox Sports San Diego. Cinco de Mayo. Let's hope it's a fiesta at Petco Park tonight. This is the equivalent of the Irish American St. Patrick's Day as the, the United States celebrates the American Mexican heritage and relationship. And welcome to uh, Petco Park. We're not upstairs, we're down in the luxury suite, the on deck circle suite. The seats eight, and it's available for you fans as well. We'll be talking about that during the course of the game. And uh, it might be tough to get my man back upstairs because all the food and drink, they just keep bringing that. And they don't even bring you a check with it. Oh, I know. It's great. It's a great experience if you get the chance to come down here. We are right on the action. As you take a look at Eric Stoltz warming up before he faces the Kansas City Royals. Literally just a few feet away from the on-deck circle of the visiting ball club, Kansas City Royals. And here is the Royals batting order brought to you by Mattress Discounters. Nori uh, Oki leads it off. Omar Infante, Eric Hausmer, the first baseman. Salvador Perez, the all-star catcher, just a youngster. He'll be 24 later this week. Alex Gordon in left three times a gold glove. Danny Valencia, third base. 
Shortstop Alcides Escobar Lorenzo Kane is just back from the disabled list, had a groin injury. He's in the eighth spot in the order, and Jordano Ventura, the pitcher. You got a Valencia and a Ventura in the lineup tonight. And if a Santa Barbara comes out of the bullpen, well, just expect. <laughs> Well, the scouting report for left-hander Eric Stoltz, a 34-year-old, making his seventh start. All four pitches for first pitch strikes. That means, yes, he can locate the fastball. We know that if he's on, he can locate the curveball changeup and that cutter as well for Eric Stoltz. And behind Stoltz, here's the Padres' defense tonight, brought to you by the Aramco Group. In the outfield, it'll be Seth Smith in left, Cameron Maven, and Will Venable. Patrol the outer gardens with Amarista third, Cabrera the shortstop, Jerko and Blanks. Kyle Blanks just called up from El Paso at first base. Yasmani Grandol behind the plate for Eric Stoltz. Big Kyle, nine home runs at El Paso in just 27 games. And Padres hungry for runs and the long ball. Hope he can fill that void, at least in part. So we're set to go. First of a three game series with the Kansas City Royals. Their first interleague action. We up on the handle, Aoki, and we're underway. Oh, the perspective to see the pitches from this oh, angle great, and feel it? the speed of the game, speed of the even Eric Stoltz and wait till the Ventura takes the mound with his 98 to 100 mile an hour fastball. It is truly amazing. I mean, it, it really gives you an appreciation how quickly these hitters, and we talk about it all the time, the split second decision you have to make. When that pitch is coming in from the pitcher, boy, I mean, we, it's incredible. Chopped. And that's a tough play. Fielded by Blanks to Stoltz in time for the out. Now, that was perfect coordination and another angle where you don't quite appreciate how quickly both the first baseman and pitcher had to react. And they haven't been together since spring training. And you can hear the communication as well. Get over there as Eric Stoltz being the athlete he is over towards the line. He does everything correctly. And credit Kyle Blanks, like leading Get over there and then leading him like a receiver Eric Stoltz covers perfectly. That's a big out mm -hmm. Perfect lateral to his pitcher. Yeah Here's second baseman Omar Infante With Detroit the last couple of years veteran infielder You so, want to grab a bat professor? Uh, yeah <laughs> I wouldn't even mind. It's amazing. Calling. You can call balls and strikes yeah. from here. You can certainly see the high and low pitch, can't you? And you brought your glove to protect did. us, didn't you? Yeah. Get Andrew ready Kasher. with that. Get ready with that. Andrew Kasher gave me this, and uh, I just want to let you know you're in good hands. Yeah. Chris Lenarfia gave me one to work, and he said, Man. You sold that thing. I saw you sell it to a kid. <laughs> no, I, I put a little maple syrup on it, and <laughs> it's working okay. Yes, sir. Hubba hubba. High fly ball. Right center field, Venable in the gap to make the catch. Two quick outs for Eric Stoltz. Now that's the tough part about our angle here is that you really have to see the ball in the air and kind of locate where it might be going. But that explains again the, the angles of this game and the geometry and the beauty of being able to sit in so many places and enjoy a baseball game. Of course, this is a, this is luxury plus. Okay, Salvador, what's up? Salvador! <laughs> Salvador! <laughs> this is where the elite meet. <laughs> hey, Salvador! What's up, dude? How you doing? <laughs> Buena suerte. Except for tonight. No suerte anoche. <laughs> Eric Cosmer checks in at 286. Yet to hit a home run. He had 17 last year. The Royals have had the same difficulty as the Padres. They just aren't scoring runs. Another chopper. Stoltz has to make the play and fires a strike to Blanks, and it's a one, two, three inning. Royals go in order. The Padres and Will Venable will lead it off. Bottom of the first.
<laughs> the on deck sweep. Let's look at the lineup for the Padres tonight. Will Venable will lead it off. Everett Cabreras. It's brought to you by Toyota. Seth Smith in left field. Yasmani Grandal, three doubles and a home run the last three games. Jet Jerko bats fifth. Kyle Blanks inserted into the order immediately. Will hit sixth. Cameron Maben in the seventh slot with Alexi Amarista and then Eric Stoltz. Against the fireballing right hander, your Dono Ventura. And the scouting report, hard stuff. Even the changeup is in the uh, upper 80s, low 90s. And wild thing, I think I love you. Maybe the Padres will love the hard throwing right hander. Get on the fastball. And he has a touch of getting wild at times. 96 on his first offering to Will Venable. Warming up, huh? Well, you can hear the slap of that ball in the mid. Lifted to left field. And uh, Gordon there, the three-time gold lever to make the catch. Here's the Royals defense brought to you by Honda. Gordon, Kane, and Aoki left to right in the outfield. Valencia and Escobar on the left side. And Fonte and Hosmer at second and first with Perez behind the plate. Mark Grant's new best friend. And Ventura on the mound. Well, the defense has been kind of the Achilles heel for these Royals of Kansas City. You know, the pitching staff already has nine errors this year. That was their season total last year. So pickoff moves to first, maybe thrown to the base and air mailing it. So uh, that's one area they'd like to clean up. Cabrera, Padres hope he can get aboard and uh, steal some bags. He's been successful four of seven steals. And each time he's stolen the base, Padres have won the game. Hey, got to correlate. Yeah. Boy, he brings it, doesn't he? Oh, he threw that one 97. Way late was Cabrera on the swing. You know, the one thing that Ventura possesses on the mound is, as a 22-year-old, great composure. He handles himself so well as if he was a 29 or 30-year-old. Not a big guy. No. Six feet, 180. Free and easy delivery. 99 on that one. That goes to the old joke of all the fastballers of Nolan Ryan. Umpire calling it a strike, and he said that's... The hitter says that sounded high to me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and then he comes back with a snapper. Mm. Two away. How about the keys to the game brought to you by Honda dealers of San Diego County? Well, since you asked, Mr. Enberg, here you go. Keep Aoki off the bases. The Padres did that in their top half of the first inning, one to three, and lay off the high heat. Boy, out of the hand, that fastball is going to look mighty inviting. But as you realize these hitters, you know, it's up around the tip of your cap. Before you know it, you swing through it. So if they can lay that off, that high pitch, we'll see how the offense does tonight. See how Seth Smith's fares. He takes it low, ball one. That was one heck of a yacker that Ventura threw to Cabrera, oh, wasn't it? That's wicked. Wow. You get ready for the fastball, and then you get the sharp breaking yeah. curveball. Oh, foul back. <laughs> Man, I, I, keep that glove handy, yeah. will you? Especially with the left handed batter, that's uh, where those little check swings come over Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Huh? And another foul. If it's a line drive, charge it, okay? Yeah. I'm glad we've got this glass in front of us. And we. We're told the good news that they said this thing will fall before it'll break. Yeah, that's nice to know. No, we've got a lot yeah. of good help down yeah, here, yeah. so. Shattered glass, I don't I think <laughs> that's in the uh, contract. Another foul. Yeah. Smith spoiling three of those fastballs. So you to find out more about the on deck suite here at Petco Park, a new, unique experience, visit Padres.com slash premium or call 619-795-5060. There's an email address as well for any questions you might have. Ooh, pretty good pitch. Yep. Curveball. His curveball at 83 is almost the same velocity as Stoltz's fastball. Yeah. And it's not just a roller, it's a power curveball going over the top. Great rotation. Perez tries to frame it. There's the fastball they got to land. Well, that looked like a changeup actually at 87. 87 <laughs> yeah. an hour change up. Smith, good uh, check swing yeah. there, laid off. 87 mile hour changeup, that's the fastball of Eric Stoltz. All right, a full count to Smith. Have to look fastball here, don't you think? Mm -hmm. 
And he does, and he hits the ball well to right center field. That ball is deep and by Aoki, all the way to the fence. Smith is going to try for three. Racing to third and in with a triple. It gets by, but backed up. And uh, no damage done as Ventura did his job, got over there to back up third, or that might have been a run. So Seth Smith delivers a triple. Padres with a ch chance here in the first inning. Well, full count, you got to look fastball. That's right in the wheelhouse of Seth Smith. And I wonder who had Seth Smith in the pick the stick. Hey, I needed Seth Smith. So, Professor, you get three points on that. Not even Ioki can get to that ball into the gap. Seth Smith says, you know what? I'm going to take it myself. I don't need any help from Glenn Hoffman. Nice pop up slide. Way to go, Seth Smith. Way to turn it around. Here's Yasmani Grandal. And he pops it up. Off third and slicing into the seats down the left field line. See, Dick, remember I said lay off the high heat. The fastball out of the hand looks great. Look at this pitch to Yasmani. Look where it is on contact. That's up around the shoulders or where it says up above the Padres on the chest, right? That's tough to get the barrel of the bat on top of that ball and line it or even hit it on the ground. And then back with the curveball. 0-1-2 to Grandal. The equalizer. Mm -hmm. Wow. And he's 22 years yep. young. Of the Dominican Republic. Signed at 16. I'm sure Pedro Martinez was his idol growing up as a kid. Has to be, right? Yeah, you With would the way he think. Went through yeah. and being from the Dominican. That last miss low was 99 miles an hour. Hasn't hit the century mark yet, but I think if uh, he needed it, there's a little extra in the tank. Hey. Ooh, a high strike, a breaking ball, and Grandal thought that ball was too high, and you could see why he argues with plate umpire Will Little. Sounds good to me. Where's our man? Hey, Joe, can we have two virgin margaritas, please? Virgin margaritas. Yeah, I'll take salt. What do you like? Yeah, salt, but I, I want the, uh, not with the uh, cubes, and I want it all mixed up. That, that yeah, kind. He want it blend, he want, you want blend, it blended? Yeah, blended, yeah. I'll take mine on the rocks. Yeah. It, they don't have a blender, Dick. Yeah, go, go, to, go up to La Jolla, get your blender, and bring it back down. Hey, don't tell you? me you don't have it. You go get it. And that's the whole <laughs> idea of this place. <laughs> Two on the rocks, though. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Come on. Hubba hubba. Let's go. <laughs> big catcher Salvador Perez. And he is a big man, isn't he? Yes, he is. Wow. Just seeing him in this on-deck circle, you can see why he has the power 
Required behind the plate. He hit 13 homers last year, drove in 79, made the all-star team. At 23, and he lines at the left field, charged by Smith, and he plays it off his thigh behind him and overcomes Maven to back up. And by the time he gets the ball in, cruising into second is Perez with a double. Looked like one of those plays for Seth Smith that was do or die, and he committed. There's nothing you could do. So when you don't come up with a catch, you have to try to block it with your body to keep it in front of you. Where does it hit? Maybe it looks like it. On the heel of the glove. Yeah, huh? there you yeah, good call, Dick, on the heel of the glove. And, and credit Cameron Maven for coming all the way over to back up his left fielder. Brings up Alex Gordon. Gordon, 30 years of age, a former All-America at the University of Nebraska, the most famous baseballer from the Huskers since Darren Erstad, who also was a first-round draft pick. He called that a ball low. From our angle, we can tell when the ball's yeah. across the knees. Exactly. No, the it's, it works inside, but it wasn't low. Maybe he just said no. <laughs> There's a strike on the inside corner. You know, from this vantage point, we talked about the differences between Ventura and Stoltz, right? It just goes to show you, you don't have to throw 98, 99, 100 miles an hour to be successful at the big league level. Eric Stoltz, he has to hit his spots. And even big league hitters at time, it throws off their timing. And that's what he does so well when he's on, spotting his fastball. Check swing, and okay, you got to feel those now. That was playable. Come on, it was right there. Where's the glove, the leather? You, oh, yeah, that talk, talk. Hey, can you put some stick up in here? <laughs> Danny, a little stick em. A little stick em. Put it in there. Yeah, thank you. Help. Thank you. Thank you. Make it stick. <laughs> We're going to set the game back 20 years here, Mark Grant. One ball, two strikes. And that's low, two and two. You know, one thing I've always been a, a fan of is in this situation, nobody out runner at second. Not, not a bad idea to put a pickoff play on at second base. You know, get a timing play, maybe a throw down from the catcher. Maybe after the pitch, if Perez is going to get a big secondary lead, like a snap throw down to second. Ground ball foul. Well, again, uh, we'll give you more information of how you can take advantage of these on deck suites or suite actually that accommodates eight fans all the accessories the luxuries I mean you could not be treated more royally than the, to have these seats another foul ball and no pun intended with the visiting ball club in town Royal I got a nice tie in okay. this guy's one heck of a royal isn't he Alex Gordon Great left fielder, probably one of the better ones in the game. Good solid hitter, although he's off to a uncharacteristic start mm -hmm. at 257. Tough out. The whole key here, statistically, you look at a team and their portfolio here, the Royals come to town. When they score, Four runs or less, actually under four runs, mm -hmm. three, two, or one. They are 0 and 15 this yeah, year. Yep. So you're pitching, and that's what the Padres have done. Hold mm -hmm. them under four. Meanwhile, if the Padres score over four, they're 10 and one. Fly ball to right, and that's hit well. And Venable just does get back to the warning path to one handed as Perez tags and moves to third. That ball carried well, and he almost. Yep. Reached out and hit it with one hand. Well, it goes to show you, you know, Alex Gordon, he can create some good bat speed, but he goes down and gets this one, hits it on the sweet spot. Looks like an off speed pitch. And then it's all on Will Venable. Which makes it look easy out in right field. So they'll go ahead. First score of the game, 90 feet away for the Royals. Infield, Infield. moves in halfway. Try to cut off the. Run at the plate. Danny Valencia acquired from Baltimore, actually a free agent. 
in the offseason. 29 did his collegiate play at the University of Miami and a fellow hurricane right behind him giving the signals. Ron Dahl. Hit 304 at Baltimore last year with eight home runs. Two twenty seven is average this year. Run deprivation. That's the story for both sides. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of this series. Who's going to be able to. Put a crooked number on the board. Just statistically it looks like uh, it'll be those one run games that. Padres have been playing all season. There's the run for the Royals as Valencia drives in Perez with a solid single to left. Valencia's second RBI of the season. Well, that's one of the things that's disappointing as a pitcher is that you make a good pitch, you snap the bat, and it dumped over the third baseman's head, Amarista, and a run is scored. And after that, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. This is very nice. How are you doing, Joe? Oh, I wanted two uh, oranges, not and not the lime. Could I? You know, no, I just can't. That's okay. Thank you. Here you go, Joe. Buy yourself something nice. <laughs> oh, not another quarter tip. Yeah. Huh? Oh. Big spin down. Line drive, base hit over the leaping Jerko into right center. Maven Fields. Ball hit hard, so no advance beyond second for Valencia. As the Royals with a double and a pair of singles and a long line drive out. Have a run home and runners at first and second one out for Lorenzo Kane. Just out of the reach of Jed Jerko. Ball elevated a little bit, and that's always going to spell trouble if you hit the ball on the line there. Jed Jerko cannot get to it. Well, the one good thing here, one out, and the double play in order for Lorenzo Kane. Just recalled or off the 15 day DL, Kane left groin pull. Outstanding outfielder. When he's in there, that 333 average sparkles. And he hits a ball dying in center field. Maven plays it on the hop and unable to get the runners playing halfway. Might have had a chance over third base, but he wasn't looking yep. in that direction. So the bases are loaded on three consecutive singles Valencia, Escobar, and Kane. And that'll bring up Ventura, the pitcher. Yeah, that was a line drive, so the runners got a hold, right? And that, that means it's still a force play. So. I was thinking Cameron Maven maybe could have thrown a second base for the force out, but not the case. You know, the best thing to do is just hold on to that baseball, take your chances with the pitcher coming up. Well, now things getting a bit serious here. Runs home. You want to check these Royals right there. Ventura has not had an at bat. This is the first interleague game. So his first time as a major league hitter. Let's see what he brings. Stoltz nicks the corner for a strike. You know, I know it's a force play at home plate with the bases loaded as you take a look at the base runners. But, you know, as a pitcher, you sure you want to try to drive it in with the infield in. I know it's a force play, but, you know, a nice little push bunt. And a little safety squeeze going. Two strikes on Ventura. This is the spot for the strikeout. Top of the order, Aoki to follow. Four hits in the inning. Perez leading off with a double, and now the back to back to back singles by Valencia, Escobar, and Kane on three consecutive pitches. 0 oh and 2. Struck him out. There's two outs. First strikeout for Stoltz, and here's Aoki, the leadoff man. Aoki will take uh, his time stepping into the box. Let his pitcher get back into the dugout where he shakes hands with Mark Grant on the way. <laughs> well, a lot of pitches thrown this inning by Eric Stoltz. Maybe uh, get this leadoff hitter. Padres get some offense and have a quick inning in the third for Eric. That's an alarming number, however. Bases loaded in his career, hitting 429. Strike one. And against left handed pitching this year, Aoki, 476. So even though he's left handed as a hitter, yep. lefties don't seem to bother him. He enjoys uh, hitting against them. See what Eric Stoltz did there? First pitch change up to Aoki for strike one. 
Goodness. Punted the ball, and that's the last thing the Lexi. infield expected. Lexi! <laughs> Here you go. Give it to a kid. Happy customer. <laughs> Come on, you're disturbing my drink. Yeah. <laughs> Need a punch out right here. A weak grounder. <sighs> Two strikes. Rounded to Jerko. Over to first. That's some pretty good pitching by Stoltz. Base is loaded. The Royals manage only one run out of four hits. It's one nothing. Sweet. one nothing Royals. Here's the information for you to reserve the on-deck suite. Visit Padres.com slash premium or call the Padres premium plus team at 619-795-5060. Ted Jerko leads off the bottom of the first. one nothing Royals with Ventura. And there's a fly ball to left center, not deep, racing over into the gap. Left fielder Gordon to make the catch. The on deck suite is available for purchase in single game or multi game plans. Buying more than one game will give you a multi game discount. A great dates and matchups are still available. Demand has been high, so hurry, make your orders. Yeah, have some fun. Look at the experience up for uh, up to eight people. I mean, you have yourself a little party down here. You get nice service, and here's Steve Garvey enjoying the big league ball game. Number six. Kyle Blanks, welcome back, big man. Hitting 265 at El Paso with nine home runs. Drives that one into the corner, but hooking foul. That would have been a nice way to start things. Well, ladies and gentlemen, number 88 is back. And uh, when he was down in El Paso, mm -hmm. the world's largest chihuahua. <laughs> right there. <laughs> And yes, he's putting some uh, power into those pitches. Nine, nine home runs for Kyle in the PCL. Excuse me, foul ball. And a broken bat. Hey, you like this matchup? A power guy like Kyle Blanks against Ventura. One away here in the bottom of the second. It's the first of three with the Royals tomorrow night at, at 6.30. Foxport San Diego, Erlin against Guthrie. In the dirt, beating went around, so Blanks will run it out, and the putout made 2-3. Third strikeout for Ventura. And uh, time to remind you to tweet your photo using hashtag SDFanPhoto. 
a chance to have it shown on our telecast brought to you by AT&T. Well, here's the, the man of the hour yesterday on Sunday Military Day. Cameron Maven, you want to shout any uh, advice to Cameron? Well, you know, no, I'm going to let him be. I want our guys to do well. Okay, you're just going to mess yeah, with the I'm, Royals. I'm huh? just going to, yeah, trying to get inside their head a little bit. Fouls it back. No. <laughs> The Wednesday game, by the way, is a day game, a 12:30 start. Just a reminder. Andrew Kastner is scheduled to go for the Padres against James Shields. What a matchup! Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hopper. Is there anything missing in your drink? I mean, it's a nice drink. <laughs> it is. It's a very nice drink. Low but we're, again. On the, we're on the clock, Professor. Low. So, uh, you know, we're on the, on the clock. Yesterday, Maven, you can't get a better break for home than this. One chopper, bare hand, and Maven beat it so easily because he had a big lead and he broke just at the swing of the bat. Walk away win for the Padres. Understandably, they were mighty happy about it because uh, in lean times, broke that four game losing streak. Maybe this will start a positive streak. Padres haven't had a winning streak yeah, yet. Yeah, they need year. to get rolling. No doubt. Happen. Gonna Absolutely. Happen. After the low pitch. Wow. See the movement on that pitch. 94 on the fastball. Three and two now to Maven. Padres, a two out triple from Seth Smith in the first. Only base runner. Keeping the ball down, Ventura is. Sharply hit and fair. Pass third. Maven on the run. Digging it out of the corner is Gordon. And Maven pulls into second with a double. Another two out extra base hit for the Padres. Good look at Sweet by Cameron Maven getting all over that fastball. And see him rolling over that top of the barrel of the bat, getting on top of it. Boy, they were playing well off the line there. It looked like a fastball. I could be wrong. I think it was a fastball. So good read right there by Cameron Maven on that pitch. You can understand they're playing off the line. They're not yeah. expecting anyone to pull that fastball. But exactly. Maven drilled it. Here's Alexi Amarista. See what he can do with the fastball. Gotta stay away from that fastball up in the letters. One nothing Royals, bottom of the second. Would you yell at Clint Hoffman to move a little bit? Because I can't see the scoreboard from this angle. 96 on that yeah. fastball. No, he did move a little bit there. A chopper that'll take uh, the first baseman to the bag, and that's it for the Padres. So the double by Maven, but he's left at second. One nothing Royals.
brainstormer, President Mike D. And we're pleased to welcome him to the booth. And you don't mind if I took a sip out of your drink? To <laughs> <laughs> Happy Cinco de Mayo, Dick and Mud. Yeah, Thank you, Mike. Yeah, nice. Maybe we'll make this an annual tradition on Cinco de Mayo. That's a great yeah, love maybe. it. Yeah. Get down close to the action. Yeah. What uh, possessed you to think about putting a eight seats right on the warning path? Well, it's kind of a throwback to an earlier idea back in uh, the late 90s at Qualcomm Stadium where we were trying to come up with customized experiences uh, close to the field, close to the action. It's hard to get any closer to the action than you are here in front of the visiting manager, in front of the visiting. Day. Nice to turn around and yeah. see uh, the visiting dugout. Oh, I've huh? done some heckling already. I, I, I've heard. Uh, security has been alerted, actually. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> He's already got a working relationship with Salvador uh, Perez. Oh, it's good. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, They're close friends now. Yeah, Infante and Hosmer and Perez to bat here in the third inning. One of the things we didn't mention, Mike, one of the many advantages of being here is that if you get here early, not only do you get the nice food and the drinks and all, you can watch batting practice. And a lot of fans don't get that close to BP. Exactly. And, uh, you know, it's a great uh, with a, a private concierge that will greet you that yeah. you guys got that royal treatment today. Line to right, right at Venable for the first down. Mud, did you position Venable there? I saw you making a hand gesture to move Will over uh, just prior to that. I've got pitch. my signs, Mike. Yeah. I, uh, thanks for giving it away because the guys in the Royals Clubhouse are now going to go tell Ned Yost. <laughs> Salvador. Hey, Salvador. How nice you hit. Margarita. No, that's the enemy. <laughs> that ain't happening again there. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this is uh, one of the many things that makes baseball the best sport. Isn't it I mean, great? you know, you, sitting down here, mixing it up with uh, you know, the guy on the on deck circle. I mean, you know, one of the great things about this, I think, in, in addition to its proximity to the field, is it really gives you a perspective as a player. Hosmer drills one to center field, a line single. That's the fifth Royals hit. But the crack of the bat, the sound of the ball and glove, I mean, you are, you can close your eyes and you can almost hear the game. You know, you know when it's a hit and you know when it's a broken bat or when it's a blooper. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, today's fan is looking for different ways to experience the game when here. And, uh, you know, what we're trying to do, and this is the first example of what we hope will be many over the next four or five years, to, to develop some iconic, uh, unique experiences and ways to enjoy Petco Park and the ball game here that uh, haven't existed, existed in the past. How long did it come? Uh, how long did it take, Mike, before you came up with this idea? Your, well, your, uh, your baby. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't just me. I mean, like everything, it's a collaboration of many uh, with the Padres uh, front office. But we were looking at spaces down at the field level uh, in ways that we could, uh, you know, develop areas. And this was a camera well. Um, I wouldn't say we were terribly popular with those uh, taking uh, photos that week when they were informed that this was going to go away. But. Uh, we were able to reposition uh, the camera people uh, down the line a little bit and create this space. And we also created a space a little further down. And, and of course, uh, I know earlier in the year you showcased the uh, all-new foul pole suite, which has been fully decked out now in its foul pole yellow up there in the corner of the Western Metal Building. So, you know, we'll, we'll look at two or three of these a year, hopefully, and uh, incorporate those in as we go forward. Ground ball to third. Could be two. Amarista to Jerko. Jerko back to first on double nice. play. Six. 5-4-3 around the horn. And that's it for the Royals in the third. After two and a half here at Petco. 1-0 Kansas City.
happen when you're in the on-deck suite. First of all, they pick you up at the valet service just outside the ballpark and escort you into the park where you have your own concierge. There's lovely Allison, our concierge, today. And they can give you gifts. I like that yeah. part. Lexus Home Plate Club. You ought to see the buffet. It goes on and on. There's the five or six different entrees. And, you know, you, I like, you know, I had a few bites, and then my man came behind, and he, he, he thought if it's free, take three. <laughs> I'm up for the winter. <laughs> we didn't know you were going to do your Thanksgiving dinner shopping here at uh, Cinco de Mayo. But. Three bananas in his pocket, and then he th- had the big magnum of the wine. Oh. So Stelt sleeves it off. Putting new, new meaning to the word all you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'd go broke if you let him get in these seats. So eight different uh, eight seats are available here. And, and the ideal, I, I guess your marketplace there, is for somebody who really wants to treat seven of his friends or four couples to an extraordinary evening at a baseball. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, and most of our uh, interest has come, not surprisingly, from uh, season ticket members and people who come to Petco on a regular basis who have seen this now in the early part of the season and have called and said, how do I, uh, how do I get that? So, uh, you know, the good news is uh, for fans who are interested out there tonight is we came up with this very late in the offseason, so uh, there's still plenty of games available. We just uh, literally the week before opening day got it put in place. Hey, Mike, is there a way, like, next year you can set us up behind the mound? <laughs> Where do you want to go next? That's a, this could be like the, Seriously? Uh, Hey, oh, I want to go. Couple, couple of, go ahead, Dave. Want, yeah, let me jump in here. I'd like to go out to the Western Middle Supply because the foul pole uh, suite out there. I think that would be cool. We I could, would we like could. the jack track. Jack track's good, yeah. too, you know. We're working on a couple of ideas for the second half of this season that we hope to get done. So uh, more to follow on that. So we can, every time we uh, introduce a new space, it could be, you know. We put. The, I saw Sweeney up there, by the way. When you guys vacate your regular perch up there, yeah. I saw Sweeney head to the booth with two big Hodad burgers about <laughs> 10 minutes ago. So I don't think it's uh, the seats are warm up there. He wasn't stealing Mark Grant's ad libs, was he? Yeah. <laughs> I left them all up there. Can you tell me? <laughs> uh, have you ever seen a guy throw this hard, Mike, up close? Uh, no, this guy is a hard thrower. And when that he uh, goes with the curveball yeah. the next pitch at 84 miles an hour it's uh, very tough on the hitter that's another great way to see uh, that action down here it's hard to see that upstairs bounces that breaking pitch okay you've been on the sidelines uh-huh. of an nfl you know many many times that's quite an experience but this how would you rank this up this, against this is right there just because of the uh i think you're closer here than you are in any other park in america Ventura taking his time, but underhands the throw to first. Two away here in the third. Mike, talk about the foul pole suite that we just talked about. All yeah. yellow. This is a all yellow and a great tribute to uh, the great foul poles around Major League Baseball. And to a foul pole, they see a shot of Tony at Qualcomm Stadium. And the motif is uh, yellow throughout. There is an artificial turf, a leather baseball glove seating, and 12 bar stools and a table that's uh, you know out in the very corner. I mean it, it cantilever hangs out over the field. Uh, very unique space in all of Major League Baseball and we wanted to trick it out if you will to uh, make it something special and it seats 12. We have very few suites here at, uh, at Peco Park that accommodate 12 people. It seems to be a, a popular number for a birthday party or a family gathering so it's the perfect size and catered by Rimmel's Rooftop Grill right above it on the Western Metal Rooftop. And uh, so it's uh, an access to the Hall of Fame bar as well throughout the game. So a very cool way to experience Petco Park. Cabrera trying to put his way on with two outs here in the third. The two out situation has been the hot spot for the Padres tonight. A triple by Smith in the first and a double by Maven in the second with two away. And Cabrera trying to work his way aboard here in the third. The pace of these games has been amazing. You know, we've had uh, very quick games this year. And a part of that is the offense obviously struggling. But uh, you know, here we are already in the bottom of the third inning. This game's uh, barely uh, 45 minutes old. Fifth strikeout for Ventura. Well, thank you for joining us and uh, picking up the tab. Huh? Well, my pleasure. Yeah, he'll, uh, Mike, Mark, thanks. Give, you want to tip so, Mr. Have D? a great day down here. A tip uh, for him, Shady Lady the third at Del Mar. <laughs>
time now for the Southwest Airlines Military Spotlight. Our color guard before the game tonight, prior to the singing of our national anthem. Always special, the military with the, not only their service to us, but what Petco and the Padres do every game and certainly uh, highlighted on the Sunday military days. Great day yesterday. Oh, yeah. Thanking the men and women who serve in the U.S. Navy. Alex Gordon, the swing and a miss and how a slider. About, hey, Dick, how about the strike ball ratio for Eric Stoltz? Now 40 strikes, eight balls. Goodness. I'm sorry, 33 strikes. 33 strikes, eight balls. And what's that come out to? It comes out to 41. Carry the, carry the three. 80% over 80% strikes. Gordon lined up to right field his first time. This is what Eric Stoltz needs to do. Get ahead. 1-2. 0-2. Oh, Upstairs with a fastball. Looked like it might have been by design right there for Eric. And Boy, that double play really helped him out, didn't it? Last mm -hmm. uh, a run on five hits for the Royals. And the count now full to Gordon. And you can see by our Southland Technology Fox track going up, down, more down than up, trying to make him chase. And he spoils that pitch. Well placed by Stoltz, a changeup. Quite a contrast in the two pitchers in terms of their style and the batting average against. Opponents are hitting 333 against Stoltz, and he'll give up some hits. The runs are the key with only a 191 average against his opponent, Ventura. Swing and a miss. That's strike three. Second strikeout for Stoltz. All right, nice slider by Eric Stoltz. He threw a changeup. Alex Gordon fouled it off. He came back with the breaking ball, the slider down and away, perfectly placed for the strikeout. Interesting as Gordon walked past us into the dugout, he was looking up at the big scoreboard, seeing the replay. Where was that? Yep. That's how did I yep. miss it? And I'm sure he'll go down to the video room and check things out. Danny Valencia knocked in the run. The Royals scored in the second inning after Perez had doubled, moved to third on the flyout. Valencia single to left, and that's the run for the Royals. They followed with two more singles, bases loaded, but Stultz worked out of the inning. Striking out Ventura and getting Aoki to ground out. Hey, if Eric can get the feel for that changeup like he just threw there, he's going to go deep into this game, hopefully quick innings. Not quite on the corner, curved around the plate. <laughs> uh, I just waved to somebody over in the stands, and Escobar looked at, looked at me and said, "What? Move over a little bit on deck." <laughs> he actually said, "Oh, me move over." He moved over for me. <laughs> Alcides, thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs> That's a strike to Valencia, and the count goes full. Could be off speed pitch here. Remember, he threw one. I hopper. Oh, oh, giving ground is Alexi. The long throw was in time for the out. That ball, wicked second hop that was eating up Amarista. So he gives ground, knowing that he's got the arm to throw him out. Oh, that is a beautiful play and hit sharply enough to where he can gather and gets him by a full step. Lynch has hit the ball hard both occasions. Yeah. Well, here's Escobar. He singled to right field his first time. That's not an easy play. Speaking of third base and Chase Headley, he's now rehabbing at Lake Elsinore. And will for three or four games. I expect that uh, he'll come off the DL this weekend when Miami comes to town. Mind again, another hit for Escobar. Quit talking to this guy. He's two for two. I'm putting a check near his name. Six hits now for the Royals. Well, you can tell 
that he was really on that last pitch from Eric Saltz. And once again, Eric needs to locate. Knob of the bat, following, get some top spin on that. Look at the barrel of that bat rolling over that high pitch. Getting on top of it. You know, Mark Sweeney talks a lot about getting on top of a pitch, right? That was a perfect example right there from Escobar. Yeah, we see the angle now, the potential base dealer with two outs, and Escobar has five steals to lead the team. Lorenzo Kane. Nice name, isn't yeah, it? Just yeah. rolls yeah. off your tongue. Sounds like a detective in a mystery <laughs> show. Lorenzo Kane takes a strike. His nickname is Nova. Ooh, He's got a brother named hurts. Zyla. Oh, that hurts. And uh, his mom, Hura. <laughs> oh, very good. Good, Professor. I, wouldn't, I didn't think of that one. I like that. Well, you were more into the dental. Than, you know, I'm into mothers. <laughs> one strike to count. The cane, the loop to single to center his first time. Hits yeah. this one shallow to center again, and that one is dying for a base hit. On his way to third is Escobar, and they get him! Cameron Maben with a strike to third as Escobar. Not much reward, high risk. You don't want to make the final out at third base. And Ned Yost, the 59 year old skipper of the Royals, takes a long look and apparently is not going to challenge. We'll take a break. Middle of the fourth inning. No, it was Seth Smith with the throw. And a good one it was. Brought to you by Buick. Visit your local Buick dealer or go to Buick.com. By Petco, the power of together. By your San Diego Lexus dealer. And by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at Southwest.com. Seth Smith tripled the right center his first time. He'll be followed by Grandal and Jerko. Bottom of the fourth, one nothing Kansas City. Up high. And Smith. One and one the count. His triple came on a 3-2 pitch. Back in the first inning with two out. Well, he got a pitch up in yeah. the zone. A breaking ball that hung or maybe a change up. Yeah. But fooled on it out in front. One and two. Well, Mark Sweeney joins us down by the Pottery dugout. And, Mark, we've got one heck of a vantage point. How about you over there? What are you seeing? Well, I see the same thing you do. I'm just at a different angle. I'm on the <laughs> other side. So, I, I mean, that's a great question. But what do you think, guys? You're down in here. I don't have the plexiglass in front of me. I think that's you have a better reaction than us. I don't understand why you guys have the, need the plexiglass. So he's right. As you look through home plate so sweet, dog. to the dugout at the far end of the dugout, that's where Mark Sweeney is located. Hey, buddy. How are you doing? 
Nice bald head. Hey, nice dome over there. Mutual admiration society. <laughs> hey, Mark, this Ventura kid, I tell you what, he's got three plus pitches. Yeah, you know, you see the changeup, you see the breaking ball. He falls in love with that breaking ball, too, but when they elevate that pitch, easier to adjust, and that's been the problem. He's thrown that changeup breaking ball a little bit elevated in his starts that he has problems with. Well, there's a protective swing by Smith at the changeup. Fool, but able to spoil it. So far, 99 tops on the fastball, 82 on the changeup. And he got him. Change up. That's six strikeouts already with one out in the fourth inning for Giordano Ventura. And time for the Saquon Casino Daycation stat of the game. Most strikeouts by a rookie pitcher this year, Tanaka. Hardly a rookie. He pitched so many years over in the Japanese league, but a rookie in Major League Baseball. This is a true rookie, only 22 years of age, Ventura, with 31 punch outs and now 37. Six tonight and Grandal swings and misses. He struck out, took a third strike, questionable third strike, first time up. There's that curveball we were talking about, gentlemen, out of the hand of Ventura. And Mark, the question is when you have three pitches like that, do you start eliminating? Yeah, you try to eliminate one that's not as successful, but it looks like he's thrown both of those off speed pitches for strikes and he'll go to do it any time. Yeah. And that's what really worries you from the hitter standpoint. But look at the dive on that 94 yeah. mile an hour fastball. It's a little different action than the other fastballs that he throws. Is that a two seamer? Yeah, I think he just gets run on the four seamer. Off the glove of Hosmer, but he has time to throw, and then he throws it away. Rondall keeps right on a going, and he'll wind up at second base. And what will be ruled perhaps two errors, at least one on Hosmer, the first baseman. Well, this is one of the things we talked about earlier where the defense for the Kansas City Royals has been the Achilles heel. Going to this game, 23 miscues. Now, I thought Hosmer, if he makes a good throw here, he gets Yasmani. And Yasmani, good uh, coaching there. It's Jose Valentin at first base, waving him on to second base. Go. So far, they've shown only one error, so it's E3, a two base error. So the Padres a chance to tie in a base hit. Here's Jerko, fly to left his first time. Takes the fastball high, 98 miles an hour. And Mark Sweeney, these are the little things that the Padres are going to have to take advantage of these errors. They have to, those errors, and especially with one out, Yasmani Grandel just putting his head down and going to second base there, getting in scoring position. They got to come up with a big hit. On the outside corner, changeup. Well, he's not afraid to throw the curve nor the change in any situation, is he? Very mature for a 22 year old. Absolutely. Ooh, that one hung up there for Jerko, the breaking ball. He took it right at the top of the strike zone. Yeah, it does look like he pulls the string quite a bit. He does throw that curveball a lot. And the changeup. Take a look right over the top. There's the curveball. Belt buckle high. Top of the zone on Fox tracks. Southland technology brings us. Ground ball sharply, but right at the shortstop Escobar across the Hosmer for the out. That's the one difference our location here from being upstairs where you have the overview of the whole field. You really can see exactly the direction of the ball here from this angle. It Maybe I'm looking at it with my heart. Thought maybe that's going to go through the hole yeah. on the left side, but it was right sure. at Escobar. Yeah. Shift over there, Escobar. Shift over. <laughs> so two outs. Kyle Blanks, opportunity to make some noise as he returns to the Major League Club. Struck out swinging the first time. Hey, Kyle, or Kyle. <laughs> hey, Mark Sweeney. Uh, you know, uh, Kyle Blanks, it looks like he's moving up in the box a little bit. His foot is not all the way back in the box. Is that something different, or did I miss that last time? No, it looks like it's different to me, and that might be something he picked up that 
really worked with in triple A you know that it's just understanding what has been working and yeah. it's a benefit to Kyle Blanks right now he's at consistent at bats at the triple A level that curveball in the dirts what struck him out the first time well, tra traditionally Dick they have that back foot on the back line yeah. there, Kyle's a good foot would you say yeah that's Tony Gwynn right there yeah, that's yes, what Tony was good call tying run ground all out at second here in the bottom of the fourth inning and another strikeout the breaking ball again seven strikeouts for Ventura. Where you get to eat as part of the on deck suite experience, and I'm here with Chef Carlos. Things smell amazing here inside today. Tell us a little bit about what you can get to eat here. What well, you get to eat here, well, menu changes daily here at Pe uh, Petco Park, uh, Lexus Home uh, Lounge. But uh, today we have a, a Cinco de Mayo celebration, which you, uh, today you could get like a ch uh, chicken wajillo and mole, you know, that we could get here today, adobo, a salmon. And um, today is a Cinco de Mayo celebration day. I love it. I picked the perfect day to come down here. Let's toss it back to the sweets with Dick and Mud. Okay. Was there anything left after the big man Mark Grant raided the joint? <laughs> <laughs> A lot to choose from. You'll yeah. go away happy. That's for certain. Pitcher Ventura struck out swinging the first time his second major league at bat. Well, it looks like he wants no part of swinging that shillelagh, huh? He's kind of squaring around. You got to swing as hard as you can. You might hit it. Three and one. Stoltz doesn't uh, want to lose this man who hasn't had a major league bat at bat until tonight. And he lines one to left field for a base hit. And that ball is going toward the corner. Smith able to cut it off, and Ventura held to a long single. That's eight hits now for the Royals tonight. And how about that? Your second major league at bat, you lie in a sharp single to left field. Well, the count in his favor, and he knows that Eric Stoltz isn't going to pull the string or do anything to get cute. And they just threw that ball into the dugout of the Royals at a little momento. Here's the here's the exchange thing. Maybe that's a old hat for the Royals. Ventura's keeping his eye on the ball. You can bet that. <laughs> He's smiling. So to the leadoff man, Noria Oki. Rounded twice to first and to second. Seventy-nine mile an hour slider to Aoki. Came over from Milwaukee in the offseason. Yeah, tough guy to double up too, Dick, has yet to ground into a double play this year. And a tough man to strike out. Round ball toward the hole, and it's through into right field. Ventura checks it second as Venable gets the ball in, and another base hit. As uh, here in the top of the fifth inning, the Royals have already collected nine.
base hit. Well, you know, Eric Stoltz, he's going to give up some singles, and some of them are going to have seeing eyes like that last one there as Ioki pulls it to the right side. Looked like Jed was playing a little bit up the middle right there. They tried to stay away from the extra base hits. He has given up one extra base hit. That was to Perez in the second inning. He ended up scoring. Remember, Escobar is thrown out at third to end the fourth inning yep. on a base hit. So Escobar singled, Kane singled, and now the first two men here in the fifth. So four in a row now for the Royals. And Darren Balsey on the phone to the bullpen. Two on, no one out. One nothing, Kansas City, and Omar Infante has fly to right and line to right. Don Roach, Little. getting all rosined up out there, yeah. get that sticky feeling on his uh, hands. I'll tip it to the glove. A grind all on the changeup. 80th pitch of the night coming up for the left hander from Indiana. Good spot for a double play ball, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh, a nice two hopper to one of the middle infielders. Out of play. Well, what a great addition as the Friar is taken in the festivities mm -hmm. here on Cinco de Mayo. I saw him over at Old Town this Did afternoon. You? Yeah, he was chowing, chowing down over there. A little mariachi music. Welcome, Willie. Oh, my. Uh oh. That ball hit deep to left field. That's chasing Smith back to the wall, and he's got it. Runners tag and both advanced 90 feet on the long out by Infante. The pitcher Ventura alert. And Aoki right behind him. Time for the spray chart. Let's take a look at where Eric Hosmer hits the ball. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Well, he likes to use the big part of the field. Center field 15 hits. He likes to pull the ball as well, but. Well, Mark Sweeney, the kind of hitter Eric Hosmer is, that's a good sign using the whole field from left center all the way to the right field foul pole. He does. He's been using the whole field, especially the month of April. The month of May hasn't been as well, but he gets a little bit long with his swing, and it, wor it doesn't work with those plus velocity guys. See how er Eric Stultz goes after him here. Rolled out to the pitcher and single to center, Hosmer. The Royals as a team come in hitting only 251. They don't have a 300 hitter in their lineup except for Kane, who's just off the DL. So second and third with one out for the Royals trying to add to their one nothing lead. With catcher Salvador Perez on deck. Ned Yost, fifth year at the helm. Ground ball up the middle, and that's going to scoot through. That'll bring in the pitcher Ventura, and right behind him, Aoki. It is three nothing. Tenth hit of the night produces two more Kansas City runs. Hosmer's 11th and 12th RBIs of the season. Well, death by singles. Off the end of the bat, not a good looking hack from Hosmer as Eric Stoltz tries to pepper it away. And you know, Mark Sweeney with the infield in cuts down the range, just putting the bat on the ball of these Royals. Yeah, and they're using the middle of the field, like we talked about. That spray chart indicates that's what he wants to do, especially in RBI situations. You know, three runs on 10 hits for the visitors. Padres with no runs and two hits. Top of the fifth, still just one out. And Perez takes ball one. Doubled and scored in the second to the big catcher. Grounded into a round the horn double play as last time. Up the middle again. They're finding all the holes. And the rash of singles continues. That moves Hosmer to second. Unbelievable. And brings uh, 
Darren Bolsley out of the dugout. You know, you know Mark Sweeney and uh, Mr. Enberg, you know, this is one of the things that we've talked about many times as a pitcher. You can only control so many things, hitting your spots, throwing a curveball, throwing a, a, a fastball. And I'll tell you what, nine times out of ten, out of the hand, if it's to be put, I'll give me a ground ball. But this is unbelievable how the Royals are finding the holes. All of them singles except one. That was a double by Perez back in the second inning. Since then, ten straight hits, all singles. Alex Gordon is the only Royal other than Infante without a base hit tonight. Two for Hosmer, two for Perez, two Escobar, two Kane. Breaking ball misses, ball one. Ground ball to first. Blanks goes to second for one. Back to first. Now throw it all. Unable to turn two. That's the second out. Gordon erased on the fielder's choice. Perez going three six. Hosmer moving to third. You know the only hard hit ball this inning was the ball at the bat of uh, Giordano Ventura. Yeah, that was a sharp single to left. The rest just nice ground balls. Uh, finally, it found a glove. Looks like Buddy's going to make a double switch here, Dick. Talking to plate umpire Will Little. We'll see who comes out of the dugout as he makes the double switch. Don Roach, apparently the pitcher, and Yonder Alonso has come out of the dugout. We'll take over at first base. That's it for Eric Stoltz. He trails 3 0. Padres baseball brought to you by Saquon Casino, real friendly and real close. By Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box and try the new Jack's Blazing Chicken Sandwich. And by the Aramco Group. Purchase, refinance, reverse. Visit us at Aramco.biz. Welcome back. Don Roach has completed his warm ups, and the young right hander with two outs and two on here in the fifth inning try to stem the tide. The Royals have a 3 0 lead. Danny Valencia, an RBI single and a hard ground ball out to third so far tonight. As Roach makes his appearance, picked up his first major league win up in San Francisco earlier in the week. And last time out was against the D backs over the weekend. He went two innings, gave up a couple of hits, one run. He struck out three snakes in that outing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Well, this will be a nice angle for us to we'll see how that ball dips and dives, uh, the sinker baller. First one, plenty of action, but outside. Valencia knocked in the first run for the Royals back in the second with a single. First and third. 
Over but low. A little outside as well. 2 and 0. Oh. You know, Don Roach has such great movement on that sinker. He could start it towards the heart of the plate and let the ball do the work. The key is to keep it about knee high. So they just beat it into the ground for a ground ball. There it is. That's a just good pitch. Diving below the swing of Valencia. Hey, we're as close as Bud Black is over in the dugout from our seats tonight. Closer. We're actually closer because of you know, the manager over here on this side. Broken bat, right side, Jerko, and they're smothering nice. it. Can they get him? He does! What a play! Jerko saves a run with the glove, denying Valencia a broken bat, base hit. But the Royals get two on four hits, and Jerko denies another. 3 0, Kansas City. What's up, dude? How you doing? <laughs> Buena suerte. Except for tonight. No suerte anoche. Danny, a little stick him. A little stick him. Put it in there. Yeah, Thanks. Help. Thank you. It. Thank you. Alcides. Thank you. Muchas gracias. <laughs> so <laughs> we're in hey, the on deck suite tonight if you're just joining us. Not up in our Fox Sports San Diego broadcast booth behind home plate. But right down on the field, closer to play than the visiting manager, Ned Yost. We're just outside toward home plate of the Kansas City dugout. Maven chops one toward third. Tough play for Ventura, but with that fastball, throws a strike to first base to deny Maven, who doubled his first time up. You know, when you're in this suite, you get a chance to order some great libations, some great food. But you know what I'd like to order? What? How about a three spot? Or a four spot this inning That'd for the Padres up on the board. Well, that three-run barrier still exists right now. Each of these teams has had trouble getting over three runs. When they score more than three, the Royals were 14-0 and until yesterday when they lost uh, to Verlander in Detroit 9-4. to And the Padres are 10-1 and when they score over three runs. We'll check them here and hope the Padres can come up with a four spot. Amarista... Bounce to first, his initial at bat. Mm. Wow. What was What's that? 95. <laughs> Sounded faster. And Marista thought, hey, I'm not that tall. Come on now. That ball up into my armpits. That's too high by today's standards. 30 pitches above 95 miles an hour. There's that other pitch. That's a changeup yep. that dives away. 86 on the change. Yonder Alonso is on deck. Will hit for the first time in the pitcher's spot. Oh. 
slap down the left field side and out of play. You know, it just goes to show you Ventura, who throws up around 100 miles an hour at times. You look at him as you mentioned, Dick. What, six foot, 180? It's all in the arm speed. It's not in the, you know, the legs. He's just blessed with great arm speed. And of course, the mechanics help him throw the ball around 100 miles an hour. But still, the arm speed—that's something that you really can't teach. But a very simple delivery, yep. isn't it? Very, very simple. It's coming right over the top, coming right at you, fall off the side right there. Doesn't this curveball that's way off the mark. Yep. High leg kick coming right over the top. Looks like he's straight on line when that ball leaves his hand. Listen, that's a good thing. Oh, look at how young he looks, huh? Ground ball, one hop to Hosmer, the flip to the pitcher, in time for the out. So two away here in the fifth inning, and we're here in the on deck suite. And no holds barred when it comes to service. Whether you want your favorite drink or drinks or food after you know you load up at the uh, Lexus home plate. Oh my drink. goodness Look gracious! At this oh, little salmon. This is oh, oh this salmon. is the Cinco de Mayo special. Oh my! Smells good too. It's very good. Yeah. That's well. I'll leave that's you. That's top notch. Top notch. Well, I'll tell you what. Just pour. Just put both of those in front of my partner, will you? <laughs> That'll be a little well, appetizer. I'll share. I'm sure Sheila in the hey, back. Don't uh, don't wander away. He may want more. Angry statistician. Well, he's all he's all about free. Trustful. <laughs> His whole wardrobe he's wearing is free. He hasn't paid for one thread tonight. He's oh wearing. come on, lay off. He's a good man. He's a teacher. What did him? Come on, let, let's feed him. That's a noble profession. And the vivacious Good stuff. Sheila there with us as well. We need a few base runners here. Two and one the count. Alonso thought uh, that was a little low. But it was right at the lower yeah. end of the strike zone, says so Southland Technologies Fox Trains. Left field. But Kane has a bead on it and makes the catch on the run on the warning pass. Alonzo got good wood, but it stayed in the yard. Different shoes yesterday when he scored that run. You look down at him, and they said Floyd Jr. on them. I asked him, I said, what does that mean? And he goes, oh, well, I needed to find some extra shoes, so I went through the lost and found. And I took these from a guy that played back in 2009. I said, Cliff Floyd Jr., he said, thanks for letting me borrow them. Texted him. He goes, do you mind? He goes, well, I left them there, so sure, why not? Go use them. He didn't wear them today, though. I thought they'd be his lucky shoes. He should wear them from now on. Yeah, it doesn't have to be new. Used works. Yeah, he's acting a little strange out there as he went out to position, was holding his left side. Maybe that's just a disappointment that he didn't get a hit, or maybe he's feeling a little ill. But ready to go as we bring you to the top of the sixth inning. The Royals with a 3 nothing lead will bat Escobar, Kane, and the pitcher Ventura. 
Line drive to left field, and that's slicing away from Smith, but he's there to make the catch on the run. One away as Escobar was two for two, hits it hard again for an out. That'll bring up Lorenzo Kane. He's two for two. So the bottom of the order, five base hits. Say when, yep. when the Ventura comes up in the on deck circle, would you tell him to I'm, slow it down a oh, little bit? I mean, it's a little too fast. Huh? He's going to get an earful. Okay, I'm hoping. Yeah. If he can handle you, then we're really in trouble. But I think he got his number. Here's Kane. And he takes a breaking ball for a strike. You can see uh, after this next pitch the close proximity of this on deck suite to the man in the on deck circle. You know Mark Grant I wanted to ask you too, Don Roach uh, that breaking ball has been a good yeah. weapon for him that obviously the two seamer but the breaking ball has been very sharp. You know Mark good observation there I love the two seamer from Donnie. Uh oh that'll be trouble if it's fair Amarista waiting for it to come down but that's way too late. No chance. Uh, Swinging bun single and that's the one thing from a sinker ball pitcher that is going to come and bite you once in a while because they beat it into the ground it's off a home plate to get the high chopper. But you know what I love about the curveball about Don Roach is that it's not like a loop big looping curveball it's kind of it's more on the power side it's a harder curveball than it is a soft toss curveball as you take a look at the two seamer right off of home plate. And a base hit for Lorenzo Kane. Three for three for Kane as he comes off the DL, and the Royals welcome that kind of hitting back to the lineup. Here's Ventura on his second major league at bat, lined a single to left field the last time. There goes the runner, and it's bunted foul. A little button run for Ned Yost. Seems upset that he has to go all the way back to first base. Come on. Checking out Dale Swain, the third base coach for the Kansas City Royals, as Kane walks back. There's Dale, former manager of the Chicago Cubs. He got a couple of years in as the head man in Chicago's North Side. Rick Renteria, old pal with the Padres now, the skipper there with the Cubs. Remember, let's see if he pulls back. Mark Sweeney, pretty good athlete, Ventura, last time swinging that bat. Yeah, it was impressive. He got into a hitter's count and just sold out on that fastball. Way so, up on the handle here. So he can pull back. The old butcher boy. Good bunt. Grandal's going to try to get the oh. force and unable to field the ball cleanly was Cabrera on the low throw. And everyone's safe. Sacrifice fielder's choice for Ventura. Well, an aggressive play made by the catcher, but he may have misjudged the speed of yeah. Kane. And that's one of the plays where you better make darn sure that you get that. It's a force play. But you mentioned that it's a great point. Kane's speed. You can see Osmani's reaction there, the short hop not getting that lead runner. So after the line out by Escobar to the warning path and left, Kane with a chopper off home plate infield hit. Now Ventura board again on the sacrifice fielder's choice into the top of the order and Nori Aoki, two ground outs and a ground single to right, scored a run, one of the two runs in the fifth inning. Bunt set in the air and can't quite get back in time. Couldn't locate it. Wasn't bunted very high. Not until you get down to the field level, you realize how short Aoki is. They list him at five nine. I don't. I think if he and Amarista stood back to back. Alexi might beat him. Yeah. And he's about 5'7 or 5'6. Small strike zone. And then he hits out of that crouch. Kane at second. The pitcher Ventura at first with one out here in the sixth.
One and one. There's our. You know what? I, I'm betting on Aoki. He's taller. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to see that. Ground ball to second. They got to hurry. There's one back to first base. A double play. The second twin killing for the Padres tonight. And we go to the bottom of the six. Earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo for you. Tweet your photo to hashtag SD fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Cody checks in with a very handsome uh, partnership there. We've got an LA fan and a San Diego Pottery fan uh, proving that you can coexist and have fun at the ball yard. So our special treat here. Cinco de Mayo is to be able to sit in this luxurious on deck suite at Petco Park. Uh, you know what? Get on the horn and give them a jingle. A jingle. 795 5060. That's 619 795 5060. Give them a jingle and have fun at the ballpark. <laughs> You're having a good time. This is great. Yeah. I just want, you know, our guys to start getting some base runners and some big hits here. Yeah, it's only 3 nothing. Plenty of time. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Top of the order. Venable, Cabrera, and Smith for the Padres against the hard-throwing Jordano Ventura. Bunt it in the air. That'll kick five. Mark Grant, Chef Carlos just called, and he asked how many more plates. <laughs> <laughs> You may it, be it's back a, in the it's really good. We're very lucky to have these seats and have them take care of us, right, Dick? It's, Absolutely. It's very nice. You didn't hear the other part of the news, though. You're you're washing dishes tonight. Hey, I've done that before. Yeah. I can yeah. vacuum. I can wash dishes. You can iron. I know. You I can, can iron. That. And you can drive. I love the, the trip. Tri was that a '69 Cadillac? It's my '69 Coupe de Ville. Yeah. Ooh. Taking care of it in the uh, the valet service when you get these yeah. premier seats here. The Nice thing I like about uh, that Cadillac, the front end is so big that when you're at the park, your front end is already on the I-5 going <laughs> <Yeah>. north. <laughs> Out of play, off the bat of Venable. You know, Mark, after playing all those years, you don't realize how close a pitcher is to the hitter when you see a foul ball off the bat and how quickly that ball can get on you. Yeah, it's very scary. You know, the, the velocity of the pitches really amazes you at that at this level. Fastball that was channeled right down the middle, but fouled away. Who's one of the hardest pitchers you uh, hit off of, Mark? Uh, probably Mark Wohlers from uh, from Atlanta Braves, yeah. and you also Rob Nem. This was a guy that threw a hundred. I faced him actually in winter ball. Did not see the pitch, heard the pitch go by my ear. And then of course those pitchers as well had the, the nasty breaking stuff like Ventura.
That was an interesting pitch there. The ball in the dirt for a moment. Plate umpire a little wasn't sure whether or not Venable went through with the swing. The ball got away. There's another one. Ooh, that one got little. Mm. So back to the point the previous pitch had Venable gone he would have been punched out with the third base umpire but he had a chance to run to first base on the strike three yeah. but uh, looks like a curveball damage the dirt. done right past the catcher yeah. and hit uh, Mr. Little in a vital spot out of play 97 Venable got to that high fastball. Ventura now stretched to his 80th pitch of the night. Striking out seven. Walking none. That's the part. There's strikeout number eight. Change up on the inside corner taken by Venable. And he's right there with the speediest of throwers in the big leagues, Ventura. Vivaldi, we might see him this weekend with Miami. Garrett Richards over with the Halos. Garrett Cole of the Pirates. We might see Fernandez as well. Miami. Goodness, they've that's got a, some good arms. That's some they? high octane right there in that list, huh? This is uh, maybe a warm up for a lot of heat over the weekend with Miami. Pitching heat. But back to the point on Ventura. Here's a hard throwing 22 year old. Yep. Doesn't walk anybody. And he's got confidence in all of his pitches. He's proven that tonight. Falls behind Cabrera, two and zero. Oh. There haven't been many of those uh, two and zero oh counts. Only one other time. How about that? Jumping in front of all the hitters. Uh, souvenir two and one you know Mark and Dick with a plus velocity guy like this with the adjustments that you're going to make sometimes guys will go to a two strike approach try to take a lot of movement in their in their approach to get ready to hit this pitch that's one of those things that you might want to employ because the velocity and the other stuff to go along with it has been difficult for the Padres to adjust to and yeah, that's an excellent point you come up there saying I've already got two strikes on me I'm just trying to make contact now be quick. And three and zero. Oh, that's the first time tonight. Oh wait, two, three and one. Sorry. How about how many three and one got? That's a third three and one count. Ventura has allowed. That Yost has to like what he sees. Hmm. He's got a good one. Through the left side in the left field. Cabrera with the third. Padre hit of the night. So some base traffic and at least Ventura now is going to have to pitch from the stretch. Mark Sweeney, that's a nice little short, quick swing from Edward Cabrera. Yeah, and I think he got into a hitter's count, and that's exactly what you have to do. And he went to his strength, going the other way, that pitch away, and hit it the other way. Nice hitting by Edward Cabrera. That'll bring up Seth Smith, a triple and a strikeout for the Padre left fielder. Nice little short punch delivers the base hit for Cabrera, who leads the team in hits. That's his 34th. Tomorrow night, 6.30 here on Fox Sports San Diego. It'll be Robbie Erland going for his second win against Jeremy Guthrie, 2-2 two and two for the Royals. One swing, and the Padres be right back in this game. 3-0 Kansas City. Oh, right at the knees of 96. Padres with three hits, the triple by Smith in the first, a double Maven in the second, and now Cabrera's single here in the sixth. That ball pulled into the right field corner, and Cabrera's on the run. He's around second to third, and they're going to hold him at third. A double move just in time is Smith on the throw by Aoki from right field. So 
two for three a couple of extra base hits for Seth Smith tonight. Now Seth Smith got a change up from Ventura he stayed on it nicely let's take a look Oh, right over the heart of the plate off the end of the bat but pulling it hitting it on the line and the Padres got some action here with only one out. And a single could cut the lead to three two and Smith had to hustle that throw was close. So Grandal struck out and was safe on the air by first baseman Hosmer. Two base error the, in the fourth inning his last time up. Well we talked about big hits for the Padres this is a perfect opportunity for Yaz. Mm. He you know, back and throws a 98 you know, mile an hour heater. You know Dick we saw Salvador Perez go out and have a visit with Ventura very big influence the Venezuelan catcher to the Dominican pitcher. Oh chases a ball in the dirt and it's a one two. Infield back they'll concede one run for an out. Aaron Crow, the right hander, heating up for the Royals. Ninetieth pitch coming up from the young righty. Fouled at the plate. So Ventura into the sixth inning without giving up a run. That means he's gone. 18 consecutive innings without allowing a run. Padres with a chance here in yeah. the 19th inning he's thrown. Yeah, now would be a good time to break that streak with a crooked number up there. High fastball right here. Lay off the heat. And so that sets up this next pitch one and two. He chased that breaking ball in the dirt. You'd think he might feed him another one, huh? Yep. In the middle of the plate and pulled softly foul. Mark Sweeney, how tough is it to square up that nasty 12 to 6 curveball from Ventura? Yeah, I actually think it's it's unhittable in a situation where early in the count with two strikes, you got to battle it, just like Yasmani Grandal did. Hopefully, he gets a mistake because of that benefit of the foul ball. Foul tip. He's still alive. Barely got a piece of that in and out of the glove of Perez. Change up. 86 on the change. He's been consistent there. You know, a lot of off speed pitches from Ventura this at bat. Remember, the high fastball was taken up and out of the zone. A lot of curveballs, change ups from the right hander. Great placement on the change. He hangs that one, and that ball's hit deep to right field, and Grandall will touch him all and tie the game. A three-run home run for Yasmani Grandall. Oh, my. The Padres get three on one swing. What, folks, that is a battle of an at bat against Ventura. Off speed pitches, fastball up and out of the zone, falling off the curveball, falling off the changeup. Let's start with strike one. How about being in the hole 0 2? Fought it off, breaky ball, high fastball. Here comes the big on one it. here. No, curveball. This one here. Mm, Changeup. Lavase sus manos. Aracalle. Grandal takes the home run lead on the club with three as a Xavier Nady released earlier today. It's only the second home run that Ventura has allowed almost 101 miles off the bat on contact point for Yasmani Grandal. Got a curveball right there and punished it and the Padres down by three have tied it with three here in the sixth. Mark Sweeney that was one of the better battles that I've seen in a long time. I got to agree with you Mark and he battled pitchers pitches 
with two strikes that breaking ball the change up and he got a mistake and he capitalized on it. Mm, fastball right there 96. It's got to be disheartening for Ventura not only ends his streak of 18 consecutive scoreless innings pitched but gives up three runs on that one mistake Grandall taking advantage of it. Well there we are at that three run barrier That's both right. teams you get over three and you barely lose. And Jerko goes down swinging. Number nine in the strikeout column for your Donnie your Don O Ventura. Well Mark Sweeney it's worth another look the battle between Yasmani Grandal and Ventura. Yeah, and this is exactly that changeup that's a way that he just barely fouls off. The previous pitch on the breaking ball was also fouled off, too. A good pitcher's pitch, and you battle that much, you're going to get mistakes, and he capitalized on it. What an at bat by Yasmani Grandal. Oh, that was fun to watch. And did you see the reaction of catcher Perez? He just jumped up, saying, How could I not catch that for strike three? How close to strike three instead? Three is a home run. Yeah, and that's something you really can't practice as a catcher. That's just luck of the draw, whether it sticks in your mitt or not. Here's Jace Peterson. Pinch hitting for the pitcher Roach. So Eric Stoltz off the hook. And if Peterson can get something going here, the Padres score another run, then Don Roach would be the pitcher of record. Uh -huh. And he looks at three pitches, and that's the tenth strikeout of the night for Ventura, but he gives up singles to Cabrera, double to Smith, and Grandal with a long three-run shot to right field, and the Padres are even at three all. I'm up here at the foul pole suite, and this is the place that you want to see that home run. You talk about the different dimensions, guys, of watching it from a ballpark, and this was a fantastic place to see Yasmani's uh, home run. And we're having some fun up here. Twelve people can fit up here, and we're celebrating Nick's 21st birthday. Happy birthday, Nick. <laughs> If you have a lot of friends, maybe you can't fit them all down there at the on deck. Bring them up here to the foul pole suite. Great time up here. If you can just send Chef Carlos up here as well, it would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they can get that good barbecue, though, up on yeah. the roof of uh, <laughs> Western Metal Supply Company. Yeah. There they are up in the foul pole suite. Nick Vincent comes in and a bunt try. Vincent scampers off the mound and throws out Omar Infante. Hey, remember in the pregame show, Mike Pomerantz and Mark Sweeney did a nice little piece on the bullpen talking to Joaquin Benoit. Well, part of that bullpen is Nick Vincent. We saw Don Roach, and they've done an outstanding job this year after the Royals scoring three. The bullpen, Don Roach, an inning, scoreless, and enter Nick Vincent, who's having one heck of a year. The kid from Ramona. It's his game, win or lose at this point. Brings up Eric Hosmer. 
a single and a two run single. So he's two for three tonight, knocking in two runs with his single back in the fifth inning. The Royals have out hit the Padres 12 to 5, but the Padres with a big three run homer from Grandall. They bunched their three hits out of the five in the top half or the bottom half of the sixth inning. You look at the Royals box score. A lot of hits from the bottom end of the order. Pretty good pitch there to Hosmer. 89 on the fastball. Nick Vincent. Hosmer, a high draft pick. That is a strike. Two and one. 2013 Gold Glove winner. 188 hits last year. Was seventh in the American League for Hosmer. Hit 302 on the season. He's the in his draft. He was the third player selected back in 2008. Just 24 years of age now from Plantation, Florida. They grow a lot of things in Plantation, mm -hmm. Florida, including a very good baseball player. Ooh, that one's over our head. Look out. <laughs> Look out after the ball's caught by the fan in the third row of the second deck. You're ready. They're not going to put you in, so just, <laughs> just put the ball no, down. No, I'm okay. going to protect you. Oh, okay. Two and two to Hosmer. Inside. Our friend Salvador Perez is on deck. Made the all star team a year ago. Lucky number 13 is the way the Royals look at him. Three and two. Uh oh, that one down the middle of the plate, and Hosmer got all of it. Venable can't get it. It's in the jack track, and just like that, the Royals reclaim the lead, four to three. His first home run of the season, Hosmer, who hit 13. A year ago. So Kansas City leads 4 3 on the home run by Hosmer, who is three for four tonight and three runs batted in. Well, it was a full count. Looked like a little cutter, and Nick wanted to get it in a little bit more. That caught too much of the inside part of the plate. And Hosmer turned on it. Probably looking for that fastball being a 3 2 count. And what a, a college try right there by Will Venable in right field. Just made it over that three foot wall atop that right field fence. And Chris Denorfia now is going out to replace Cameron Maven in uh, the middle of the inning. And we, we thought Cameron was asked, acting strangely an inning ago, kind of holding his sides. And looks like he might be a little ill. Stomach problems for Maven. Nothing serious, hopefully. So Denorfia takes over. For Maven in distress. The man on the mound isn't feeling too good either. Nick Vincent has given up a home run and the lead for three Kansas City. There's the the three run barrier broken on Hosmer's home run. The Royals, that's only their 13th home run of the season. Padres the second fewest in the major leagues. Yeah, last in the American League for the Royals. It's the second home run allowed by Vincent this year. Brings up Perez. He has a double and a single, three at bats. The Royals came with their hitting clothes tonight, didn't they? 13 hits. And they've got number 13 at the plate. So Venable now make another, they make a move. Uh, Venable goes to center. Center field into north field to right field. Outside. 
side. Well, the excitement is in the Royals dugout on the first base side near us. Fly ball to left center. Long run for Venable. There in time. Middle of the warning path. Well, Perez gave it a good ride for the second out. That'll bring up Alex Gordon. Tenth anniversary Petco Park canvas, the giveaway on Saturday night against the Marlins. You seen the example of that? I haven't seen that. I'm sure it's a quality item. Always is. Yeah. But Baseball night in San Diego oh, Saturday yeah. night. Hope you'll be with us. Right one at the knees. Alex Gordon. He's feeling left out here. He's 0 for 3 on a night where most of his teammates have muddled multiple base hits. Said cutter. Well, you ask and you shall receive, Professor. Here's the canvas we're talking about. Oh, nice. Now and then. Petco Park on the bottom, and what the area looked like before the building of Petco Park. Mm. Art collectible presented by our friends at Petco. Tenth anniversary. Boy, how time flies. One and two, the count. Back to Vincent on the comebacker. That'll do it for the Royals in the top of the seventh. But Eric Cosmer's home run has given them a 4 3 lead. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. On the Cinco de Mayo, it's also brought to you by Petco, the power of together. And by Mercury Insurance. Mercury Insurance giving away Padre tickets. Learn more at mercuryinsurance.com slash Padre. Many of the fans here in proper... A tire. Well, is there anything better than a nice Mexican meal? And you had some of that food tonight. I noticed you that disappeared on that plate. I thought, you know, maybe you'd save a little for the old professor. <laughs> Aaron Crow in there for the Royals, right hander. You saw the numbers for Aaron. Aaron throws a fastball slider and a change, 89 to 94, as the Friar trying to rally the troops here at Petco Park. 
did his collegiate pitching at the University of Missouri. And hits Tigers. the corner. And 91 miles on the fastball. So the Potter's going to have to adjust here to a fastball six, seven miles an hour slower. Chris Denorfia's first at bat hitting in Cameron Maven's spot. No word uh, from the Padre bench as to the problem Maven had encountered. It's the corner again. The Norfia, then Amarista and Alonzo in the bottom of the seventh. Padres need a run to tie. Ooh, chases the ball in the dirt. The Norfia not happy with that. Slings the bat aside as he's thrown out at first base. Well, remember our keys to the game earlier, Dick, where it's time to revisit them, and they're always brought to you by your Honda dealers of San Diego County. Keep Ioki off the bases. He's one for four. He's singled, and he has scored a run, one of the four runs for the Royals with cheese. And lay off the high heat. Jordano Ventura, ten punch-outs. A lot of them on off-speed stuff. More importantly, ten strikeouts with no walks. Yeah. And he was Rista runs up and takes ball one. He was not the wild thing that we possibly, possibly anticipated. Tell you what, he really showed a lot, didn't he? But thanks to Eric Hosmer there at first base, the home run. He's the pitcher of record. As he goes six innings, allowed three runs, five hits, no walks, and ten strikeouts. Remember that name, folks, Giordano Ventura. He's going to make some headlines. Only 22. Aaron Crow. Fourth year with the big club. Last year was seven and five, all in relief. So the Padres got some battling to do down by a run, but the biggest battle of the evening was Yasmani Grandal off of Ventura. Being in the hole, there he is, the Padre backstop. Three run shot, being in the hole one and two, fighting off some great off speed pitches. And Marista. Chase is high and away, and the count now is two and two. Crow striking out Denorfia. That's 11 Padres that have been punched out tonight by Kansas City pitching. Over the mound, Escobar makes the play. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. You earned your meal again. Yonder Alonso. Flight out to deep left center field is only at bat hitting in the pitcher spot. And so. Seth Smith with a couple of extra base hits leading the way for the Padres but the big blow. Yasmani Grandal's third home run of the season. That leads the team in home runs now. Shift is on. Yep. And right to the second baseman. It worked. And Alonso's problems with collecting base hits continue. In order the Padres go in the seventh.
like this one might get away from the Padres, but Yasmani Grandal doing a little bit of damage tonight. Yeah, what an at-bat by Yasmani Grandal. And understanding he had to battle off a couple tough pitches. Then he gets that breaking ball down and in. Perfect spot for Yasmani Grandal. The Padres have to come up with this win, especially after that moment. Yeah, running out of time right now. Eric Hosmer with a solo shot makes it 4-3. to three. Kansas City still some time left in this one. When we see on Padres Live, the postgame show brought to you by Cox Communications. We'll wrap up everything that happened here. We'll tour the major league, show you some highlights, some exciting action across baseball. And you're going to hear from the Padres manager, Buddy Black. So we'll see you gentlemen after you enjoy your spell in the luxury seats All after right. the final out. Okay, Mike and Mark on the Emmy Award winning Padres Live postgame show. Yeah, we've had a good time down here. And it certainly is watching baseball of a totally different perspective. You're part of the game this close to home plate and the dugout. Danny Valencia, RBI single, ground out to third, and an RBI single taken away from him. Last time he was up, that was the play made by Jed Jerkos getting on the outfield grass to get the final out after. The Royals had scored two runs and knocked Eric Stoltz, the starter, out of the game. Dale Thayer on the hill. There's that <laughs> consistent 93 yeah. mile an hour fastball. With movement, good location. The majority of the time, Dale Thayer, 2 0. ERA of 0. .60. Escobar and Kane to follow Valencia here in the eighth. Valencia caught looking as Thayer hits that outside corner. Hey, Dick, guess how fast that last fastball was? 93. 93 miles an hour, two seam fastball. Watch the glove of Grandal. Mm. Wow. Good movement, outside corner. That's pitcher's pitch. Yep. The new goose. Escobar. He's had himself a nice night. Two singles and a long line drive out to left. And then Lorenzo Kane, a perfect three for three on three singles, is on deck. Part of the 13 hit Kansas City attack. So Cameron Maven uh, leaving the game uh, midstream. And Chris, do you have a report? Yeah, Padre's telling me that Cameron left with stomach sickness. That's why. He All must right. have had the fish. He didn't have the luxury of eating in the first class. Of course you are. Chris Budden with that report. Thank you. And there's the bunt try foul. Just when I was going to order dessert. <laughs> oh, that's a line from airplane. Come on. It's baseball. We're having fun. This game's supposed to be fun, all right? Come on. Come on, Dale. Punch him out. Escobar reaching out to just foul that one off. Yeah. This is a whole new experience for us. <laughs> Fox Sports San Diego, but it can be a wonderful one for you fans. You can have the opportunity to reserve this eight seat on deck suite right on the field here at Petco. There's a slider from Dale Thayer. Get him leaning a little bit. Well, this gives you an idea, folks, how close we are. There's the on deck circle. And there's the there's the bat boy. Yeah, right there. There's Lorenzo Kane. There's the warning pad. Yep. I can smell the pine tar on the on deck circle. Three and two. How's that old factory going for you? There it is, right there. That's how close we are. See? Full count. They are working on Escobar. And he misses outside. 
And that is the first walk of the game. Either side. Yeah. And here we come. Valet service. This is where it all begins for you. Those of you who uh, purchased this suite. They escort you. Take you right to the concierge. Our good fortune was to meet lovely Allison. Hey, Max right there on the right. Always does a great job with the valet service taking care of you. I heard that a beautiful cat was just heading up the freeway going to Orange County. <laughs> I hate to break the news to you. <laughs> Valley is in perfect, you know. Only kidding. Only kidding. Here's Kane. A real tough hitter there on the on deck circle, number 16. Hey, Butler! Butler! <laughs> He's not going to look at you. Butler! I could beat you in a race right now. Challenge you to a 40 yard dash. Hey, Butler, the Billy, ball. Hey, here's Billy. the ball. Hey, oh, come. I could beat you in a race right now. <laughs> country Breakfast, right? <laughs> That's his nickname, Country Breakfast. I wonder why. <laughs> you got uh, on deck sweet dinner. One strike to Kane. Escobar aboard with a one out walk. You know, we mentioned Billy Butler on deck, and it's an amazing stat, Dick. This year, the bench, the whole bench for the Kansas City Royals, 0 for 3. They've only used pinch hitters off the bench three times this year. Isn't that amazing? That's well, unbelievable. Well, isn't part it? of that is the designated right. hitter. He's their DH right. primarily. And a good one. And it's surprising that the Royals come in here moaning and groaning about how they're not hitting and not scoring runs. Pretty good lineup. Kane, three for three in the game tonight. Dale Thayer with a nice quick move over their first base, throwing a dart, keeping him close. Escobar with five steals. Of the three hits, only one hit very solidly a bloop single, a line single, and an infield hit off home plate. There he goes. Grandall's throw, not close. Number six for Escobar. See what kind of jump he gets. Oh, decent jump. Very good jump. And the short hop doesn't help matters. It's online, but you know, Jed Jerko's got to go up for that ball, then come back down for it. And the count levels at two and two to Lorenzo Kane. And he lines it to right field, charging to Norfi. He's got it. The throw back to second base. Not in time. Escobar read it well and uh, didn't take off. Kane, including with a four for four night, lines out. Good play by Chris Norfe because, you know, that ball off the right handed bat is going to slice towards that line. He got in front of that ball nicely, got it in quickly, but nobody was covering second base. It's going to be tough because. Everett was playing way over in the hole there. Defensively at shortstop. And here's Butler. First pinch hit appearance this year for Billy Butler. Usually the the, uh, the DH. Getting 241 on the season with a home run and 12 runs batted in. He's had a very nice career, hasn't he? Hit 289 with 15 homers last year, and that was an offseason, he thought. At the knees. 
He's got a man in scoring position, and that's where he excels. Last year, hit 341 with runners in scoring position. Escobar at second, two outs here in the top of the eighth. Royals lead 4 3. Inside. Trying to work it in and out, trying not to fall into a pattern to Butler. Billy Ray Butler from Jacksonville, Florida. Ninety three on the fastball yep. again. Mr. Consistency. Nice overview there. You see perched at second base is Escobar with two outs. Another walk. So after a game in which the pitchers on both sides stingy, no walks at all. Player has given up a couple, and that goes to the top of the Kansas City order and Nori Aoki. Yeah, very uncharacteristic of Dale Thayer. Although that ball was, uh, you know, that ball's off the plate, right? A little bit, but Butler with one swing. Maybe he'll take his chances with Aoki here. Now you've got to force at any base on a grounder. You can go the short way. There he goes. Throw to third. Not, not in time as they didn't uh, mind the store and allowed Escobar to pull for third. So he has a couple of steals in the inning and seven on the season. Well, Dale Thayer kind of one looked him at second base. What I mean by that is when he went up to the stretch, he looked back there one time and then delivered towards the plate. Escobar caught on to that. And not even close at third. Good jump. Not a great slide. He was coming up a little short on the slide. There's a strike to Aoki. 0 1 2. And Aoki, you see how shallow they are. Doesn't have a lot of power. Grounded into a double play his last at bat. It's the first time all season that he's hit into a twin killer. Slaps that foul. You think about the influence on Japanese baseball created by Sadahuro O with that lift the right leg, mm -hmm. you know, the big leg the, kick. Big leg yep. kick. And all the Japanese hitters employ that same style. Lift the leg. Kind of perch on that back foot. All the weight back there and deliver the swing. Suzuki the same. One and two. First and third. Top of the eighth. Royals four. Padres three. Popped him up. That's the first pop up of the night. And Marista makes the play. And that's it for Kansas City. Top of the eighth. The Padres need a run to tie two to take the lead. Venable. Cabrera. Smith. To hit. Bottom of the eighth.
four three on Eric Hosmer's home run in the seventh inning and tomorrow on Fox Sports San Diego. Catch a new episode of SD Live coming up former quarterback of Old Miss. Padres uh, outfielder Seth Smith stops by the studio along with college football analyst Kevin O'Connell. Plus the crew talks with NFL Hall of Fame running back Marshall Falk and so much more tomorrow at 1030 on Fox Sports San Diego. And of course football the theme with the NFL draft upcoming and everyone curious about the Chargers selection. Will it be a cornerback? Will it be a nose tackle or linebacker? Wade Davis, the new pitcher for Kansas City. Yeah, this kid's got some good stuff. Uh, punch outs, strikeouts are the name of his game. 23 strikeouts in 12 and a third innings of work. Venable leads off. He is struck out, grounded out, and flied out, and a pop fly to shortstop. Escobar waves off company and squeezes the first out. 0 for 4 tonight for Venable. Changes for. Kansas City, Jared Dyson goes into center field for Lorenzo Kane, and Mike Moustakas is at third base. He's another of the high draft picks by the Royals. He's been in a bit of a slump and against a left handed starter uh, out of the lineup until now. Cabrera has a single and a couple of strikeouts. His single ignited that three run rally in the sixth inning. He singled. Smith doubled and then Grandall followed with the three run homer. Well, the Padre hitter is going to have to turn up the dial again against Davis. Fastball, he can get up to about 97 miles an hour. He'll throw a cut fastball, a curveball, and a changeup. Just above the letters. 96 on that toss. was a high selection of the Tampa Bay Rays 10 years ago. He was a third rounder. Pitched in Tampa for four years. Came to Kansas City last year. Along with the James Shields, the right-hander we're going to see on Wednesday. That was the trade that sent uh, Promising outfielder Will Myers to Tampa Bay. We saw Torres and Houston Street warming up in the Padre bullpen. Three and one. Padres need a base runner. On the knees. Well placed. Three and two now as Wade Davis working against Devin Cabrera. Well, you want to be knee high, and it looks like Davis. He gets that downward plane very nicely, right at the knees, over the top for the called strike. Seth Smith to follow, one out here in the last of the eighth. Broken bat looper, and that's going to fall in center field for Ord. No, Dyson chases it down. Jared Dyson just into the game, the speediest of all the Kansas City players, able to make the catch. Off the bat, looked like that had a base hit written on it. He's out there for that reason. Gets a good jump on that ball, even though it was a big swing. Got jammed. Dyson making up with that speed of his in center field. And let's check it out. The jump. Oh yeah, he, you know, just for a split second, did he hold his ground? Yep. Just for a split second, and, and he then all have, of a sudden turned it on. You read the sound, yep. broken bad. That's not going to go very far. Now that's one disadvantage as a broadcaster from being low. It's really tough to read mm -hmm. the uh, overview and how close or far the outfielder may be from a play. Here's Seth Smith. He's had a big night. A double and a triple takes a strike on the breaking ball. And the shift is on. Three infielders on the right side. We've seen many times this year. Triple and a double struck out his middle at bat. A 
fastball that drives in. Cantor Perez. Hey Dick, how about that last pitch? Prior to that one, a little cut fastball in, as you called, and then the straight fastball uh, down and away. That gives a hitter really a tough kind of, you know, way to adjust when you see that cutter in, which has movement, and then that straight fastball that has a little bit more giddy up on it. And that one was galloping in there at 96. Yep. Discipline by Smith laying off the high heater. 96 again. And Perez tried to pull that into the strike zone. It was wide. Full count. That was the curveball from Davis and a good eye as there's the guy who won the battle against Ventura earlier in the game with the three run home run Yasmani Grandal. Got to figure fastball here after he missed with a curveball. And went upstairs and swung at ball four. So the Padres against Davis go in order in the eighth. On to the ninth, 4 3, Kansas City. Homer from Yasmani Grandol as we go to the ninth inning, a 4 3 score. And we'd like to remind you again if you would like to enjoy the luxury and the closeness of this on deck suite experience, eight seats here, only five feet from the visitor dugout. Reserve your suite recommendations and reservations. Padres.com slash premium or call the Padres premium plus team at 619 795 50. 60. It's available for a single game, or you can order it for, say, a whole weekend series, and you get a discount price when you do. Great dates and matchups ahead, so take advantage, folks. Get a different perspective of the greatest game on earth, baseball. You are literally feet away from home plate, the on deck circle of the visiting team. It is some kind of nice. <laughs> So when, what did you enjoy most, the valet treatment, uh, lovely Allison? You know, that's kind of like saying which child you love the most. Oh, come on. Uh, I know you like the food, though, didn't you? The food's great. Yeah. But seeing the game this close yeah. is really special. The food was outstanding. Yeah. You know what I think we should have done, though? We should have made a deal. And uh, Jordano Ventura, the pitcher, mm -hmm. had him go up into a press box. Only fair. We're down here. He goes up there. Huh? <laughs> Maybe we'd have more luck against it. Hey, important inning right here. 
for uh, Alex Torres who comes on in relief to face Infante. Hosmer. And, and Perez. Perez. These are three tough hitters. Infante is uh, one of only two without a base hit on the lineup for Kansas City. Alex Gordon the other. He's fly to right, line to right, deep to left, and try to bunt his way on in frustration and was thrown out by Nick Vincent. Eric Hosmer with three hits and Lorenzo Kane with three to lead the Royals. Hosmer's first home run of the year, the difference in the game at the moment, 4 3. And Torres falls behind 3 0. There's Hosmer on deck. Three yellows swinging and a fly ball to left field. Innocent. Seth Smith with the first down. And time now for our Carl's Jr. star of the game. It's not Yasmani Grandol. It is Eric Hosmer with three hits and a home run. And the difference in the game tonight and three runs batted in. He's had the complete night. So he earns the. The ballots of all of our experts. And our Carl's Jr. star of the game at the plate now. Hard to believe he doesn't have a home run in the entire month of April. Ground ball sharply right at Jerko at second base. One away. Hey, guess who's leading off next inning for the Padres in their half of the ninth? Yasmani Grandal as Holland oh. heats up. The closer, Greg Holland for the Kansas City Royals. There's Yasmani leading off next inning. One more out here, needed by Alex Torres. Fonte followed flight out and has my grounds up. Perez has a double and a single. Two for four. Right field corner goes to Norfia in fair territory for the out. It's Torres with a solid one, two, three effort out of the bullpen. Yeah, Monte Grandol. No rule about hitting uh, two, is there? For the Bill Howe play of the game, how about Yasmani Grandal's three run blast that tied it back in the sixth inning off starter Giordano Ventura. Grandal's third home run 
of the season and in the last four games Yasmani playing long ball two homers and three doubles in the last four games and he'll lead it off here in the bottom of the ninth inning. He battled he was in the hole one and two against Ventura and hit the curveball out of the ballpark enter right hander closer Greg Holland. Pretty good numbers for Holland he's a strikeout pitcher. Averaging 14.73 strikeouts per nine innings. Only two walks in 11 frames. He's perfect in the save category. Seven for seven for Greg Holland. Rondall try to get something cooking here in the bottom of the ninth with Jerko and the pitcher spot to follow. Mm. Boy, the Padres have seen fastballs yeah. over nine. That was 95. Three of the four pitchers yeah. that they face tonight: Ventura, Davis, and O'Hallen. 95 plus. One at one. It looks like the changeup. Or the split rather from Holland. He throws a fastball, slider, split. The fastball they can get up to 98. Broken bat, fly ball, dying in left center field. Dyson gets this one. Well, he can get him, can he? Shattered bat, one away. Well, you got to get that bat head out front. You can see down by the barrel, just shattering that bat of Yasmani Grandal. Just almost planted the pointed end on the follow through. Mm. So one out to Jed Jerko. Light out, grounded out, struck out. Total of 12 Padres striking out tonight. 10 by the starter Ventura in six innings. That ball is ripped deep to left. We've got a tie game. Jerko touches the ball. About that. Four runs on two swings tonight. Grandall a three run shot, and Jerko has hit his third home run just as Grandall socked his third. No doubt about that one right off the crack of the bat. Oh, he missed big time with location too. He wanted it down and away. It leaks right on the inside part of the plate. Oh, and ain't that sound some kind of nice. Jerko circles the bases, and we have a new game here in the bottom of the ninth inning, tied at four. And Nick Hundley comes out as a pinch hitter for the pitcher Alex Torres. A rare night or game when the Padres all runs, four of them on home runs. And they have cleared the three run barrier. Yep. Who's going to win that battle? And Jed knew that he had to turn up the dial to catch that fastball out of the hand of Holland, and he did just that. Oh, and two now to Nick Hundley. Jerko with a two run home run on Saturday night in the ninth inning. Fell just one run short, but his home run tonight ties it in Houston Street. So it's an optimistic sign because three is usually in there to save, although he did pick up a weekend win. Padres hope he won't have to enter the game. Excuse me, swing right back to the pitcher, and Hundley is out. So two away, and Chris Denorfia the batter. That was a sweet swing right there by Jed Jerko. Quick to the baseball inner half. 
creating some excitement here at Petco Park. That first blown save this year for Holland. He was seven for seven in save opportunities. Until that Jet Jerko home run. He only allowed three home runs in 68 appearances last year. So that's a, a rare feat. And Jerko gets the job done. We're back even. Ball one. First home run allowed by Holland this year. Hey, did Chris Denarfi have a walk off last year off yes, of uh, Arolis Chapman straightaway center field? Fastball pitcher, right? He doesn't get a fastball, he gets the slider. Pretty good slider from Holland. Good depth to it, good break. Good breaking ball taken for a ball, although it could have been called a strike. It was close. That was a good take by Kristen Orfia there. Hitters count two and one. Chris came off the bench to pinch hit. Check that he came in defensively when uh, Maven, who was in this slot, became ill, struck out his only time up. Ooh, we went for the game winner, didn't he? Hey, you know what? I've got no problem with that. 2 1. If you've got the heater coming at you, come out of your shoes. <laughs> Why not? Trying to send the folks home happy. Because we know Christian Norvie with two strikes, Dick. He's got the good approach, going to center field, going the opposite way. He's not going to take that type of swing with two strikes. Chop toward short. Escobar. No, it's the second baseman that makes the play. Infante. And we go extra innings. The Padres have been outstanding in bonus panels this year. And Jed Jerko gets the job done with a solo homer here in the ninth to make it even. Padres four, Royals four. Tie into the tenth inning. Here are all the runs. Valencia driving in a broken bat single. Got Perez home for a one nothing lead. Kansas City in the second. Then they got two more in the fifth inning. Off starter Eric Stoltz. Ground ball single to center field off the bat of Hosmer to make it three nothing. The Padres then got Cabrera single in the bottom of the sixth. A double Smith and that long shot by Yasmani Grandal way back in right field to tie it at three. But Next inning, Eric Hosmer against Nick Vincent. He finds a very top of the Jack deck out in right field. 4-3, Kansas City, bottom of the ninth. Jerko with a one out. He knew that one was well gone deep to left. And the Padres had tied at four all. A dramatic ninth inning home run by Jerko sends us into the top of the 10. The Padres are 2-0 and in extra innings. Kansas City one and two.
Giordano Ventura gave up that three run homer but struck out 10 with no walks. Very impressive. And it's up to the two bullpens. Alex Gordon, Valencia, and Escobar to bat here in the top of the 10th inning. Houston Street into pitch for San Diego. Gordon has sent a long out to right, struck out, and a couple of ground balls. Well, Houston Street, look at the numbers. Opponents only hitting 154. 14 strikeouts in 11 innings. His last outing for Houston was against the Arizona Diamondbacks. That was yesterday. Part of a bullpen that is 5 and 0 this year, the only unbeaten bullpen in baseball. Hey, hopefully it could be a trend because Houston recorded his first win of the season last night, right? You throw up a goose egg here, the good guys score a point, everybody goes home happy. Cocktails. Don't yell that too loud. We'll have about 10 of them here. The service has been so good. High fly ball. Left center. Venable out there to collect it for the first down. Danny Valencia. Out of the game. And we'll see Mike Moustakas for the first time power hitting third baseman for the Royals who's been quiet this year except for the home run column he leads the team with four but batting only 151. Same spot, a little wider, 2 and 0. Oh. He's a perfectionist, Houston Street. You can see the reaction after that pitch. But you know what he's good about? Rebounding, bouncing back. Forgetting about the last pitch and making a good quality pitch. This pitch here, 2 and 0. Oh. Hmm. That was in his power zone. Hey, he hit 90. Foul tipped. Keeping it low. That ball leaked over the heart of the plate. Change up two and two. That's a beautiful pitch. Is that one in? So the count goes full to Mustakas. In cricket, that would have been a strike. Sure would have. He like Hosmer. The back-to-back -back years, they had the first-round pick. He was the second selection. Mustakas. Keep the ball away from him right here. Fastball down and away. High fly ball, center field. He just missed it. Venable, will it ever come down? Wow, that was a major league fly ball. A couple of outs to the center fielder to open the 10th inning. That'll bring up Alcides Escobar. Two for three and a walk tonight. in the glove out there as he gets ready in the Kansas City bullpen. Got a call. That's paint right there, huh? Good slider.
Sweep hasn't thrown that slider for a strike yet. Maybe by intent. Yeah, I think he has that ability, Dick. That's a good call. He'll, you know, he'll show it to these hitters. And, and he'll also prove, he has proved in the past, that he'll throw that pitch here, two and one, right? Doesn't have to be ahead of the count. He'll throw that when it's a hitter's count, fastball count. There it is. In the heart of the plate. Foul tip. Foul tip, yeah. Trout two and two to Escobar. Pulled off it just a little bit. Once again, a slider and a fastball count. Out in front of it. Just ticked it foul. Ground ball, third, fair ball, long throw, but let's see, on the money, a one, two, three inning for Houston Street. Coming up, Amarista to lead off the bottom of the tenth. The Royals and Padres tied at four. Padres giving three runs off the bat of Yasmani Grandal, a three run home run in the sixth inning, rallying from three nothing down after Eric Hosmer homered a solo shot for Kansas City in the seventh. In the bottom of the ninth inning, with one out, Jed Jerko stepped up and hit a long shot. Home run number three on the season to left field, and we're tied at four. New pitcher is Kelvin Herrera. Well, I know it might be a shocker to you, Mr. Enberg, but Herrera throws the fastball anywhere from 92 to 100. He also throws a changeup and a curveball to boot. Kelvin Herrera, 12 strikeouts, 13 innings. Looks like he could maybe get a, a little while with six walks. Well, Ventura, the young 22-year-old starter. Was from the Dominican Republic. And now here in relief, the fifth pitcher used tonight by Ned Yost, also from the Dominican. Amarista, Alonso, and Venable. Three left-handed bats against the right-hander Herrera. Three straight ground outs for Amarista. Two to the first baseman and the last time to the shortstop. 97. Oh, about oh, that's that. perfect. Hey, what a, what a great time to win this ball game. Starting to rain a little bit. Settle the dust on the infield as Joaquin Benoit starts to heat up. Well, I'm sure those uh, designer umbrellas are going to be part of the deal here, huh? <laughs> sure. Hey, where's our concierge? <laughs> Allison. Umbrellas. <laughs> Either that or a quick home run. Yeah, that's even better. Oh, it's actually coming down a little bit now. Two and one to Amarista. 
Well, we just struggled to get any rain in the off season, and here we are, May 5th. That's great, isn't it? I love it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Hashtag awesome. Oh, three and one. Alexei trying to work his way on. Yeah, so awesome. Yeah, why are you hiding your scorebook under the table? That, you know, what, honestly, that's the only thing. And Andrew Kasher's glove. I'm going to keep that dry. And, and this pen. And this baseball. That's the only thing I want to keep dry. Swing and a miss. Amarista on a 3 1 pitch. 96. Thought he might take a shot at it. Hey, why not? That's a good fastball from Herrera. We've seen Alexi turn on the fastball before. Now let's see if he shortens up. 3 and 2. Hey, a double will be just as good, right? Just get a board. Yep. See if he keeps the fastball away here. Yep. Tiger's it's out there and he gets him to swing at it. One away. That is the 13th Padre to strike out tonight. Alonzo is 0 for 2. Came in a double switch. Back in the fifth inning. Ball one. It just has puzzled everyone, of course, most of all Yonder himself. But here's a man who makes such good contact, yep. having so great a difficulty in getting a base hit. One and one. Herrera's only 24. Already his fourth year with the big club. Ninety-nine. Ventura threw a couple of ninety-nine. Mile an hour fastballs, the starter. Yep. Well, one thing the Padre hitters have worked in fastball counts this inning. And Marista had a fastball count. He eventually went down swinging for the first out. Hitters count here, two and one. And left field hit pretty well into the corner and caught by Gordon. A foul ball. So two away. And Will Venable uh, wearing the collar tonight. Maybe uh, he'll make big amends right here. Yep. Well, pretty good outfield there in left field there by the name of Alex Gordon, a gold glove winner. Has plenty of room to catch that ball in foul territory for the out. Three straight years, the yep. Gold Glove winner. Ground ball to first, and we're going to go to the eleventh inning. Padres four, Royals four.
next weekend on Friday night. Celebrate 10 years of Petco Park history as the Marlins are our hosts. Relive all the great moments of Petco Park after the game with a spectacular Petco Park 10th anniversary fireworks presented by Petco. Get your tickets at Padres.com. Friday night against the Marlins. We don't have the pitching rotation yet for Miami. There's a good chance you're going to see a, a pretty good one on the hill. And here's an outstanding right hander, Joaquin Benoit. No, it was nice for Joaquin to spend some time on our pregame show with Mike Pomerantz and Mark Sweeney talking about the integral part of that bullpen and how well they have done collectively, and Joaquin being a big part of it as well. Opponents only hitting 186 off the right hander. He's a strike thrower. Only two free passes in 12 and two thirds innings pitched. From the Dominican born right hander. Well, here in the top of the 11th, he'll face Lorenzo Kane, who has three hits tonight. Then Jared Dyson in the ninth spot in the order. The pitcher is slotted in the leadoff spot, so we'll have another pinch, pinch hitter used by Ned Yost. Kane, three consecutive singles before he lined to right field for the out in the eighth inning. Just off the DL. Ebon's foul. A little shower that has visited Petco Park. Not a bad thought. A little wet baseball now. Makes it a little tougher on that third baseman. Field and throw. It's just an occasional drop now. Yeah. Nothing serious. I don't think the hard stuff's going to come for quite a while. I keep playing. Well, it's headline news, though, huh? Hard down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Kane's on his way to second. The Northfield digs it out, and Kane will pull up. And it's a relay throw comes in. Lead off double for Kane. What a night. They've missed him. Injured. Out of action for over two weeks. He comes back to duty and delivers four hits tonight. Yeah, and he does a nice job. Look at this pitch from Benoit. It's up. It's a two-seamer. And he just gets that barrel of the bat up on top of that baseball, up under it, uh, maybe a little bit, but doesn't try to pull it. You know, with his speed, he probably could have tried for three, but hey, leadoff double. You take the chance with one out, but not yeah. with no one out. Well, here's Dyson batting for the first time. You got to watch the bunt here with Dyson. And he uses his legs defensively in this way. And he does exactly that. They better hurry and just to get him on a perfect sacrifice to move the go ahead score to third base with one out. Well, you know what's nice about that? It's perfectly executed and done on the first pitch. Good bat control right there. Even though he kind of pokes at it a little bit, he bunts the top half and deads it perfectly. And, and as the runner at second base, Kane can see that play as soon as that ball is coming down off the bat onto the ground. He is off and running and Bud Black will now bring the infield in. Pinch hitter is Maxwell. Justin Maxwell big right handed batter infield draws in tight. Try to cut off the run at the plate. Kane carrying good speed. Swing a miss. Well, on the season, only four hits and 27 attempts. No home runs and two runs batted in. This is his second at bat as a pinch hitter, 0 for 1. <laughs> Trying to induce a ground ball, stay out of that fly ball that would give Kansas City the lead. Kane at third, one out. Right. 
boot. Two and one. Mary Cosmer's home run gave the Royals a 4 3 lead late until Jerko's homer in the ninth tied it at four. That's where we stand. Dave Roberts there with manager Bud Black. Three and one. Omar Infante on deck. You know, walking him here isn't the worst fate. No. You got the double play in order. You can move the infielders back. You've got the righty on deck, as you mentioned, Dick Infante. Ground ball. Oh! Alexi comes to the plate, and there's the out. Oh, that ball eating up. Amarista, but great hands. He stayed with it. Made the play to the plate to erase Kane. Big, big play for the Padres. What a great play by the little ninja at third base. Coming out of nowhere. Bringing in the defense, the two hopper backhand. And Yasmani got the ball, blocks the plate. Kane runs right into it. That, that's huge. That's yeah, a play where Kane was not able. Very nice, Professor. And uh, no collision. Chalk went up for the professor. <laughs> no, I don't need any chalk. I just need an umbrella and head for home. <laughs> First pitch. <laughs> and Fonte, and that takes the runner out of scoring position. And Maxwell is uh, not the steel threat that others in that Royals lineup might be. Kane frustrated by the fact that uh, he couldn't get home safely. Did, did you see Joaquin Benoit's reaction after that play? Oh, he was pointing at Alexi at third base saying, you're the man. Two S hombre. He's a really a likable big guy, isn't he? Terrific interview in the Padres Live, the pregame show. Accommodating. Great in the clubhouse. In front, a 0 for 5 tonight. And... Benoit jumps in front one and two. Well, I want to uh, I want to correct my Spanish. Joaquin was actually saying to Eres el hombre. You're the man. And yes, he was. See, he's correcting that. Amarisa looking into the dugout of the Royals. Somebody shouting at him. Although we're so close, he may be reacting to your commentary. <laughs> One and two to Infante. Wooden chase. Eric Cosmer on deck. Three hits tonight. Three runs batted in. Two run single and a home run. Count missed outside. Somebody in that dugout yelling, How can you take that pitch? Yeah, no kidding. It was off the plate, though. It was. That'll give Maxwell a first base, a jump start. Lifted into foul territory and out of play just beyond the dugout of the Padres. If that same ball had been in this direction, we might have had a souvenir. Yeah. How about a long set by Benoit and maybe a throw over to first base just to. Uh, Maybe catch him leaning a little bit. Who knows? Wouldn't hurt. 
kind of a short lead over at first base. Line drive right at Cabrera for the final out. The big play of the inning, one out man at third, a shot off the bat of Maxwell. And Amarista, watch his position, hangs in there, backhand, throws a strike, run denied. And we go to the bottom of the 11, tied at four. Look in on Petco Park from that magnificent statue of the great Mr. Padre, Tony Gwynn. Padres four, the Royals four to open this three game series here at Petco Park. Pleased that you've joined us. I hope you'll seek out one of the games that remain. Two more with Kansas City and four with Miami. Yeah, start hanging with us or keep hanging with us. We've got ourselves a real good ball game here. Uh, we got Everett Cabrera leading off and uh, smells. Smells not only like salmon, but smells like a run. <laughs> okay. A little hot coffee or hot chocolate to go with yeah. it. Yeah. Cabrera has one of the six Padre hits tonight. A single in front of Grandal's home run. Smith doubled after Cabrera, and then Grandal tied it back in the sixth inning. New pitcher. And the sixth tonight for Kansas City is Lewis Coleman. Hello, Lewis. Pretty much a two pitch pitcher for Lewis Coleman. Fastball slider, 86 91. So he's got to really rely on location. Hey, five walks in eight innings can get a little wild. Well, he was wild there, but offered by a Cabrera, 0 2. And you can see the deception in Coleman's delivery. He throws across his body, low three quarters as Tim Stoffer heats up in the Padres bullpen. Padres have used seven. Stoltz, Roach, Vincent, Thayer, Torres, Street, Benoit. Everyone getting a chance to throw tonight. And three pitches, and Cabrera's gone. Another Kansas City strikeout. Only 89 on the fastball, so the Padres having to adjust to something, quote, that slow, unquote. Seth Smith, a double and a triple, and a couple of strikeouts. And they bring the shortstop Escobar over on the second base side on the shift. But the Mustak is uh, playing almost halfway between second and third. You know what? Two points here. Obviously, everyone would love the walk-off home run, right? Hey, why not bunt one down the third base line? Get a runner aboard. Beat that shift. Oh, come on now. That's not a strike. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's off the plate. Yeah. 
Nice little swing. Breaking ball. 0 1 2. One and two. Coleman went to high school at an academy in Greenwood, Mississippi. Pillow Academy. Really? Yeah, very comfortable place to study. <laughs> and recess. Very nice. Yeah, between semesters. Yeah. One and two. And two balls, two strikes. Bottom of the 11th, one out, bases empty. Tied at four here at Petco Park. Jed Jerko watching every pitch from Lewis Coleman. All back. Fine baseball program down in the SEC in Baton Rouge, Louisiana State. Here's an old miss hitter, Seth Smith, facing a Bayou Tiger. Coleman from LSU. And a full count. And on deck looms Yasmani Grandal. Well, if I'm a bet man, Coleman is going to throw that 2 C fastball down and away. Give a Seth Smith left field. Hey, if he singles that way, he'll give it to him. Side and low. Ball four. Well earned walk from Smith, who leads the Padres. That's his 11th walk. And that's the first walk given up by Kansas City pitching all night. In the sixth inning, trailing 3 0, Yasmani, or seventh inning. No, the sixth inning. A three run home run, Yasmani Grandal. And that tied the game. Padres had trailed 3 0. Giordano Ventura, the 22 year old starter for Kansas City, uh, a brilliant performance. That was the one mistake he made. Struck out 10 batters. Keeping everything away from him. And he's earned the respect. And time to have a chat. Perez wants to have a chat on the mound. Padres trying to keep the record clean. Extra innings have favored their approach. They're 2 0 this year. Hey, and be sure to stay tuned after the Padres win this one for Padres Live postgame show. Coming up next, Mike Pomerantz, Mark Sweeney, going to tell you about this game, all the action in Major League Baseball, and you'll hear from the man on the right there, manager Bud Black, managing the scorecard and doing a little cheerleading to go along with it. Sudden uh, played wow. umpire Littles calling anything near the outside corner a strike. Rondall understandably upset. That hasn't been a strike all night until no. this inning. You're right. That's that's off the plate. He missed one of those against Seth Smith. That should be three and zero. Same spot. This time he calls it a ball. Three and one. Winning runs at first base here in the bottom of the 11th inning. One out. All four pitches outside. Oh, it comes inside. Ooh, that, was in, that was in his alley, yeah, wasn't it? Middle in, something he could spin on, but he didn't like it. Yeah, Jerko with a ninth inning home run to tie it. That four is on deck. Runner goes. Ball four. So with 
One out of back-to-back -back walks, Smith and Grandall. That puts that winning run in scoring position. Ned Yost looks out. He's used almost his entire bullpen. This is the sixth pitcher tonight for him. Padres have used everyone. They've exhausted everyone except Tim Stauffer. Remember, I mentioned it when Coleman came out to the mound in his eight innings. It worked five walks. Now that's seven walks. Here's Jerko with one out in the ninth, trailing 4-3. Oh, did he hammer that one? His third home run of the year to tie it at four. That got the most positive of congratulatory slaps from manager Bud yeah. Black. Well, a couple of things here. Meeting on the mound, the middle infielders, they want to get the sign straight with that runner on second base. And Perez possibly going over a scouting report on how they want to go. Against Jed Jerko. Remember the pitch he hit for the home run? It was middle, middle in, right? Mm -hmm. he, he turned on it. Got to go up there with a the mindset. Forget about the home run. A single yeah, would be sure. quite nice. Thank you. A ground ball to the center fielder would be very, very oh, nice. Yeah, new favorite club. Smith carrying the winning run at second. Breaking ball. Chases again, going two. Probably going to get another one. One out, winning run at second, and the fastball away. Renee Rivera with a bat on deck. Pitcher spot. Nice take. Oh, that's the last position player on deck for Bud Black, Renee Rivera. Nubbed up the first baseline. That's a tough play, but made by the pitcher Coleman. And then awkwardly, two out now, and runners at second and third. Winning run now, 90 feet away for the Padres. Well, we're back with the slider again. Almost handcuffed Hosmer with that throw. Uh, pitching coach Dave Island out to have a chat. Rivera. We'll follow Denorfia. Check that. Rivera here hitting in the uh, the sixth spot, the pitcher spot with uh, Denorfia to follow. Chance to win it for Renee. Yeah, and you know a couple things here. First base is open, right? You know, if they walk him, they walk with the force in any base. You got righty, righty, you got Rivera, Denorfia. One thing is for sure, I'll tell you what, uh, he's probably going to see a first pitch slider here. Innocent fly ball to center. Dyson is there. And we're going to go to the 12th inning. Padres leave two. It remains knotted at four.
direction. This is Gene Machi, the pitcher for the Giants, with Hunter Pence at second. At Pittsburgh, they throw it away, and Penn scores in San Francisco, winning with great pitching over the weekend, swept it. The Atlanta Braves and they outscore Pittsburgh tonight 11 to 10. They started this evening having won five in a row, so that's six straight for the Giants elsewhere around the majors tonight. Carlos Gomez, a home run two for two for the Milwaukee Brewers in their game, an 8 3 win against Arizona. Troy Tulowitzki's having a great early season, two home runs tonight in the 8 2 win over Texas, and Michael Morse in that San Francisco win. Had a couple of doubles, a couple of RBIs, and the 11-10 Giants victory. So they won six in a row, nine, ten of 11, the only loss in that string to the Padres. And they will maintain their two-game lead over Colorado. Well, how can you not love Tim Stauffer? Mr. Everything. He'll pitch early in the game. He'll pitch late in the game. He'll set up at times. He'll chew up some innings for Bud Black. Timmy's having a great year. Up to this point, a 1.98 ERA. Opponents only hitting 224 off the right-hander Tim Stauffer. And the bullpen is empty. It's Stauffer, and hope that the offense can get him a run. Eric Hosmer, three for five tonight, single, two-run single, solo home run. One and one. Well, Tim should be pretty fresh as well. Last time out was on the second, and uh, the only thing left is the backpack and the uh, the coffee mug and their coffee jug, rather, and so the bullpen rookie goodie bag. Hmm. Well, Big man's cut at that one. You know, you'd think that big leaguers they'd get like a Louis Vuitton bag out there or something. You know, spend some dough. Get a nice Chanel, Coach, Louis Vuitton, Burberry. You're all over that oh. in Michigan Avenue yeah. shopping, aren't you? Ground ball, Cabrera near the bag at second to throw out Hosmer. Hey, did you see Tim Stoffer kind of offered that one that let it go? He kind of wanted to go for it, but you know what? He knew that his shortstop was playing up the middle a little bit. That's a veteran's place. Yep. Been there. Knows you just mess those up if you try to glove it and deflect it. Exactly. Got a good man there with a the glove at shortstop. Let him make the play. Salvador Perez doubled, grounded into a double play, single to center, long out to center, fly ball to right. Mm, ball one. Change up that sailed high and inside. Perez making the All Star team last year at 23 years of age. First All Star catcher from the Royals since Daryl Porter back in 1980. Wow. Daryl Porter. Fly ball right center, and that's in the alley and all the way to the fence. Perez posts into second base with his. Third hit tonight. He joins Hosmer with three and Kane with four to lead the attack. You know, for a big guy, Perez does a nice job of taking this pitch the opposite way. You know, you look at his stature and his size, you think, oh, he's pull, pull, pull. He does a nice job there going to right center field. Well, Tim Stoffer's got some work to do, but he's proven in the past that he can get out of this mess and leave that runner stranded. Alex Gordon is the hitter. He's wearing the collar 0 for 5 tonight. I think uh, Gordon's in love with the pine tar rag. Oh, yeah. Right out of the Ozzie Guillen helmet school. Remember Ozzie Guillen had all that yeah, yeah. fine tear all over his helmet. Helps in the bug season. Midsummer. <laughs> well, they stick to it. Oh, yeah, they fly around. They just stick well, right they, there. They yeah. won't sting you, that's for sure. Yeah. Those mosquitoes. It's protective in a lot of ways, that helmet. One at Perez. At second base for the Royals. They're in the top of the 12th. Gordon 
outstanding with runners in scoring position so far this year. Nine for 26 that averages out at 346. Three and one. Well, if you're wondering about scorecard management for Ned Yost, the manager of the Royals, the only bench player he has le left is his backup catcher, and yet it's usually the way it works out in the National League. Mm -hmm. Brett Hayes, who bats from the right side, the only position player left for manager Yost. Full countdown to Gordon. Mike Moustakis on deck for Kansas City. Ground ball foul. Pass third. There's big Mike. Four home runs this year. Didn't start tonight. He's had his troubles with left-handed pitching. Padres will send another lefty after the Royals tomorrow. Robbie Erlin against Jeremy Guthrie, 6:30. For our Padres live pregame show here on Fox Sports San Diego. Struck him out on the changeup. Two away to Mustakas. But what a money pitch by Tim Stauffer. Full count, change up way out in front, the old trap door, and Alex Gordon. Swings right over the top of it. So with two outs, Perez at second base. It's Mustakas. His one at bat fly to center, and he fouls that one high over our heads. Thank goodness, high yeah. over our heads. Promise me we'd get three or four souvenir balls for the game tonight. Yeah. First time you've been wrong all year. Stauffer trying to join the Beard Club there in the bullpen. Saw that. Change up. Uh -oh. Line to right field sharply. Up with it is Skidorf here. Here comes the run around third. Perez, the throw to the plate, going to be close. And he's in there safely. The ball got away anyway from Grandal. Five. Five four, Kansas City. As Mustakis. Hitting an anemic uh, 150 comes through here in the 12th. No, I think Tim Stover hung a change up there. He got elevated and he got extended. Now the race is on. Like Chris does everything he can to get in tried in front of that ball, and the one hopper just didn't get there in time. And the uh, the Royals catcher was being sent the whole way on that one. 16th hit of the night for the Royals. Breaks the tie here in the 12th inning. And here's Escobar. He's got a couple of hits. And a walk. You know, just to see that play develop in front of us right here, I mean, it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. See that runner almost coming and, right into our face. And you can see Kristen Orphia charging that baseball and making that throw coming right at you to Yasmani Grandal. Unfortunately, it was the Royals that scored on that play, but this is what we saw here how close to the action. He beat the throw, even if Grandal had handled it cleanly. Wound up at second base, Mustakas on the throw to the plate. Two strikes now, Escobar. Looking ahead to the bottom of the 12th inning, the Padres have scheduled Donorfia, Amarista, and Alonzo. 
as left hander Tim Collins heats up in the Royal bullpen. He would be the Royal seventh pitcher tonight. And Perez the all star catcher he's showing all of that tonight. You know he looked like he was kind of laboring a little bit after he crossed home plate. You might see Brett Hayes go in there. And catch. The bottom half of this inning. Yeah, he's putting on the gear he's going to go. Round ball left side Amarista ranging and throws out Escobar good play again by Amarista but. Double Perez single Mustakas by four Kansas City. Come up with a run here in the bottom of the 12th or more. They trailed 3 0, and then Grandal hit a three run homer. They trailed 4 3. Ninth inning, Jerko, a solo homer to tie it. And now down 5 4. It was Coleman who walked two men in the 11th inning, but it didn't uh, produce any Padre action. Stays on the mound, but they do have the left hander Collins ready to pitch to the left handed hitters that follow Amarista and Alonso. That Figures to be the play by Ned Yost. Let's see. Denorfia has struck out and grounded out his two at bats after replacing Cameron Maven, who left the game with stomach illness. Maven had a double in uh, two at bats while he was in there. Slider for a strike. Slider, a one two. Pretty tight little slider right there. The Norfia, a good two strike hitter all season long. One and two. Coleman's game to win. Second thoughts about the sign from Perez. That worked in the first two pitches, not there. Two and two. Well, this is probably going to be Coleman's last hitter. You got the two lefties, Amarista, Alonzo. You got the lefty Tim Collins warming up in the Royal bullpen. Protecting. Yeah. Amarista hitless tonight in the ninth spot in the order. Stoltz up only once. And Alonzo for three in that spot since. Line drive base hit. Two strike hitting. Kristen Orpia. 
Well, the Padres have the tying run on, and the winning run will come to the plate here in the bottom of the 12. And here comes Neil Yost on his way to the mound, and undoubtedly to change pitches and bring in lefty against lefty. Check out this two strike swing. It was a slider down and away, and Chris Norfia. I mean, he just goes to a place that'll give a pepper a little bit, shorten up on that backside there, right up the center of the diamond. Nicely done, Chris Norfia. That was beautiful. So if you're just joining us here, extra inning action. The Padres have won both their extra inning games, both in the 12th inning, and that's where we stand now in the 12th, although San Diego down by one as Coleman exits and the left-hander Collins comes in. Let's go back to the home run action here tonight. Two unlikely teams to hit the long ball. Yasmani Grandal with a three-run homer that reduced that 3 nothing lead to a 3-3 tie. That was in the sixth inning, and then in the seventh, Eric Hosmer against Nick Vincent just did find the top of the right field wall to make it 4-3 Kansas City. But in the ninth inning with one out, Jed Jerko. Oh, did he hit that one? He bombed that to left field to tie it at four to send this in extra innings. And here in the top of the 12th, it was Mustakas driving in the catcher Perez with that single. And Kansas City with a 5-4 lead. Yeah, the rally caps well placed. The loyal fans that have stayed through uh, four hours of action here tonight. Well, they need some rally shillelaghs, these San Diego Padres do here late. Enter Tim Collins, left-hander, only left-hander in Ned Yost's bullpen. He throws a fastball, curveball change, low 90s. Did you just uh, get the concierge for a Tom Collins or a Tim Collins? I was going to say, hopefully, after the Padres come back and win this one, we could order Tom Collins there all the way go. around. Oh, sorry. I still no, that's all right. I like the, I like the I way you're thinking. I think we're thinking the same way. <laughs> cool up the vessels. There we are with all our fans. Can't miss that beacon of Mark Grant, can you? Right? Look at this. This is before the game, part of the treatment for the on deck suite. You get your choice of a wonderful look at my eyes. Those are what biggest papers I've used in a long time. That just uh, food after food after food. Who's that fellow behind me there with that plate? <laughs> a little, little bottle of wine. Go for the Magnum. <laughs> Is that an artichoke in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Amarista, tying run at first base. Gonna get it down now. The Norfia, a good base runner, smart base runner. Get that bunt down the first base line. Get that first baseman in. You don't want to bunt it down the third base line. Stock is creeping in at third. High Get ball back. one. Yeah, you, you feel like you have to coach a little bit down here, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you definitely want to get more involved. It, yeah. it, it does seem that way. You're absolutely right. Oh, Lexi. Get it down now. Stockus makes the play across. The Padres have the tying run in second with one out. That was beautiful. Well, just great technique from Alexia Marista. Dens that ball perfectly. Has the third baseman feel that ball. Mustakas over to first base. And the uh, the footwork over there by Eric Hosmer. Nice footwork over, yeah. you know, switching feet because that throw ended up on the foul side. Of the first base bag. So time called. A meeting at the mound is Yonder Alonso. Who has shown through his three years with the Padres that he can hit left handed pitching. You know, the, the more and more I, I see Salvador Perez, I really like that kid. 
He's taking he gives first of all, let's start from square one. He gives a great sign. He gets a great target behind the plate. He takes charge back there. He's not afraid to go out and talk to the pitcher and take charge. I, I just like the, 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 the whole the whole package of Salvador Perez. He's a, he's a good young catcher. 6'3 and 250 pounds. This young guy. Alonzo slaps it foul. Fly deep to center. Grounded to second and fouled out to left. Stock has delivered a two out single to give the Royals the lead here in the top of the 12th. Good block by Perez. <laughs> After all the hard throwing right handers the Padre hitters have seen tonight, now they get the lefty Collins. Also calling time. Another good stop by Perez. What is it with the relief pitchers and the beards, huh? I don't know. It seems to be a, a fashionable trend going on these days, huh? Ryan Wilson the, certainly did he. He was the first to really let you know the big beer go. I mean, I mean, Collins, he could pitch for the House of David, looks like, huh? Probably he's got a couple as well. Low strike. No argument from Bud Black. That's pretty good pitch here. That's knee high. It might look low, but tracks it. You know, that's that's right at the knees. That's where a pitcher wants to throw. Yep. Two and two. Tying run. Ready to go out at second. Krista Norfia. And now the full count to Alonzo. He represents the winning run. First base open. Will Venable on deck on other left handed hitter. Back. Sliced again down that left field corner. Gordon going over, but it's going to fall into the aisle way. So is his glove. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Flash look, leaps, and loses the leather. <laughs> Threw that fan off. He was about to make a good play, but he didn't expect that glove to come flying in there. Again, three balls, two strikes to count. Padres have the tying run here in the 12th inning out at second base. And that one's shallow and left. A long run for Gordon. Can't hit it. In the third, it goes to Narfia. And the second, Alonzo. Dying quail in the left field, and the Padres had the tying and winning runs in scoring position. That's a gold glove left fielder out there, couldn't quite make the play. Charging is Gordon, dives, keeps it in front of him, but the ball getting away. Alonso realizes that, rounds first, and that's the winning run, as you just mentioned, Dick. Out on second base. Will Venable, who's due, 0 for 5 tonight. 
Will Venable needs to swing the magic shillelagh here. Infield being brought in. This surprise you for the tying run that the infield's coming in? Not really. That opens up some alleys. Infield tight. Hitters delight. Line drive. Foul. Mm. Just missed. Out front just a little bit too much. He flirted with a game winner. They're ready to celebrate. They got to cut down that run. Oh. Foul the other way. 0 1 2. Everett Cabrera's on deck. He'll turn it around and hit right handed. If he should be called to play, that will chance to end it right here. up the alley and the game will yes. end on a ground rule double. Will Venable delivers and the Padres for the third time this year have won in the 12th inning. Venable with no home runs this year and only two runs batted in delivers a two run walk off double and the Padres escape with a come from behind night six to five. Well, Perez wanted this pitch up, fastball up, get it up. We want him to swing through it, up and out of the zone. Will gets that top hand on that fastball. Some late inning magic, and everybody's going home happy. For the third time tonight, the Padres down in the score. Rally and finally win it in the bottom of the 12th inning, six to five on Venables, double the right center. Well, that's a great way to open the three-game series, and once again, the Padres score more than three runs. They are now 11 and one. Took almost four hours to win it. Will Venable is the man of the night. Let's go to Chris. Well, you took some pretty good swings there at that at bat. I know you wanted it on that first one, but walk me through those those bat bat. I, I mean, honestly, I'm just trying to put the ball in play. You guys did a great job. Dino did had a great at bat. Yonder had a great at bat. Uh, Lexi got the bunt down. Just just trying to put a ball in play right there. Had a flair for the dramatics the last couple days. You had the walk off yesterday. This today. What momentum does this do for your team? Uh, you know, just it's it's another one. Keep us feeling good. You know. Yeah, no, I hope you like blue Gatorade. Oh, it's all good. Sorry about that. Uh, you didn't get you? All right. Yeah. I got quick feet like you. <laughs> now, what can these two wins do for your team? Uh, you know, they're two wins. Uh, hopefully, they give us some momentum. We'll see. Uh, so I think some good at best. You know, we're feeling a lot better about ourselves offensively, and we'll see what happens. I'll let you go dry off. Right. Great job out there. All right. Thank you, Chris Button. Will Venable. Hungry for that kind of hit delivers tonight in the 12th inning a 6-5 dramatic come from behind win for the Padres How about that Mike Pomerantz? Well, you called it. Yeah, Will was doing it was great to see him able to deliver there His one hit tonight the game winner the walk-off will recap everything that happened We'll check out Yasmani Grandal's big at bat one from Jed Jerko and you'll hear from Buddy Black in moments